And welcome everyone to our first Team Demi Human game of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Um, I guess we should start by thanking uh, Daryl from Gamers Tavern Show for helping to arrange all this, uh, so that members of Team Human could learn D and D, uh, especially as inspired by Critical Role on uh, the new Twitch channel, Geek and Summary Twitch channel. Um, as we start our adventure. You are here. Uh, so let me welcome everyone to the lands of Faerun, uh, and specifically to the western shore of Faerun, the, uh, known as the Sword Coast. A rather dangerous place, a lot of swords. It is a land of wizards and wonders, of sword fights and sorcery, of magic and miracles, of Dungeons and Dragons. And as we begin, you find yourself towards the southern part. Um, I think I can draw everyone's attention here. Uh, you're on this road here. Uh, you've, For whatever reason, you are traveling together. Um, at some point, we'll establish a backstory for your characters. But you have been traveling on foot for a number of days. Uh, you're all a little wary of, of life on the road and ready to reach the next town. Uh, who Who's in the lead? We're going to establish what's called a marching order. Um, who's up front? Are you putting a strong one up front? Or are you putting somebody perceptive? I'd actually like to be up front. Go uh, Identify your character the first few times just so everyone knows while we learn. Um, I'm Nickel. Okay. So your your rogue is leading the party. Hey, this is Ben. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, excellent. I'm sorry it took so long, but I'm finally here. I think we thought you were all here. All right, well, now I'm really here. Excellent. Uh, Cole will be behind uh, Nickel. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> okay. So... For the last couple hours, Nickel has been promising you that just over this next hill, guys, the town, I know it's here, it's going to be right as soon as we crest this hill, and it's never been true. But this time, this time you think it might be true, because as the sun's setting and it's growing dark and the light of Saloon is rising into the sky, uh, you can make out, make out the faint glow of the torches and so forth that would light a town. Um, just over this hill, and and uh, Nickel crests the, fir- the the hill first, and uh, whatever he sees causes him to immediately stop, um, and and kind of take a knee. Uh, as the rest of you join him on the hill, you look down on the city of Greenrest. Uh, this is kind of an overview of the the town. As you watch the city, you hear, you, you see fires burning throughout the town. You see uh, groups of people with torches uh, running throughout the streets. The sounds of screams and crying fill the air. Uh, smoke from the fires is, is billowing into the, into the air as well, causing it to be, well, smoky. Um... And it appears as if the town of Greenrest is under attack, is is under under siege. Uh, Cold Chaxus draws his sword immediately. Okay. Uh, I'm still going to assume as a group you take a moment just to kind of take in the situation uh, to try and get a handle on what you're you're seeing. Uh, you see townsfolk running here and here and there. You see what look like organized groups of raiders. Um, Mixed groups of humans wearing robes. They look like religious robes or or cultist robes. Uh, You also see these small creatures about three, three and a half feet tall, and they have kind of like reptilian snouts, uh, and they're all carrying spears. Um, There's groups of each of those uh, together, but there's also mixed groups, so they appear to be working together. Um, In the center of town, there appears to be a keep, uh, you do see some people, it looks like they're trying to make their way to the keep, but there also seems to be uh, some of these 
other forces uh, starting to surround it. Um, just as you're about to head in, there's um, one more thing you take notice of. There is a... The, the smoke has risen into the air, and it's like this thick cloud uh, hanging low over the city. And suddenly the smoke begins to move in an odd way, and from the smoke, a, a crack of lightning uh, strikes one of the homes, and the, the roof collapses and uh, goes up in flames. And from that point where that lightning emerged, the body of a huge blue dragon emerges from the smoke and begins to loop back around the town. Uh, and, and many of you are petrified for a few moments before you're able to even breathe after that. Um, and there's... Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the most important question you can ask in D&D, what do you do? I stare and admire the dragon, because it's pretty cool. And different. You don't see a blue dragon every day. That's true. So, what city are we going to? Um, probably not this one, any other one, but this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, why bother with these people? It's not like they're so that important for cool. us. Yes, the dragon is cool, until you're up close and personal with it. And as you're watching, you you notice this large black, like obsidian black temp, um, spire uh, towards the far end of town. And uh, as the dragon's looping her past it, this emerald green ener- like beam of energy emerges from it and strikes the dragon. And the dragon lets out this howl uh, of pain, um, but manages to turn and use its and and open its maw, and from its open mouth another crack of lightning reaches out and strikes the spire, causing it to collapse. Which direction are we coming from into town? Uh, You'd be coming from the west. Okay, I start going down the hill toward the town. I'm very angry at seeing dragons destroying a town, much like my backstory. And uh, I'm going to fight these guys. And I tell the group, come on, let's kill them all. So there are two ways into town. Uh, one is to take there's a road, the other and then there's a, a patch of forest and on the other side of the forest there is a river. Both of them seem to lead lead into the middle of town. So, uh, realizing that no one else has agreed to fight to go with you yet, which way are oh, you I going? Run after okay. Rourke runs after him. Yeah, I guess I'll follow. I mean, I do have use of him later on. Yes, yeah, Rourke also. a little follow. too soon to stop and turn and go the other way, so I'm going to follow him. Yeah. Sometimes you run into the city because that's where the plot is. Well, my, my characters, and we've probably, you know, we've been on the road for a while, so we've probably shared stories, and you guys know that my dragonborn village was killed, was destroyed by evil dragons, so this is all too familiar to me. And my kind of thing is to just run in and and start killing so if anyone has any suggestions like they want to go to the forest by all means you know uh throw that out there and, and you know we can well i would see say we, we use do. we go through the forest because it looks like these creatures are mostly focusing on a town and we would have some sort of cover and sort of get the advantage hopefully i agree completely uh, i agree going through the forest also, my backstory is kind of similar to the dragon. Um, my village was attacked by slavers, so anytime I see raiders attacking people, I get real pissed off. All right, we've got some built-in uh, incentives to take the adventure hook. Excellent. All right, the forest it is. Okay. Uh, so, in an already dark night, um, with the, the moon starting to be obscured by, by the smoke of the burning village, uh, you make your way through the woods... Uh, slowly trying not to draw attention to yourself stealthily, and I'd I'm gonna have everyone make a stealth roll for me. And what is stealth roll? Stealth is one of your skills, so you're gonna look on your character sheet under where it says stealth. Uh, it should be filled in with some kind of modifier, and you're gonna roll one d20 plus whatever that number is. So okay, go figure. Your rogue is stealthy. Nice twenty-two. Apparently not that stealthy. Okay, I'm oh, the least stealthiest rogue. 
I rolled a natural 20. What do you know? All right, we've had our first critical roll. Uh, technically, crits only apply to uh, attack rolls, but I cool. I usually, you know, honor them as... Uh... All right, so Rurik blew it. That's, that's what happened, guys. <laughs> uh, that's okay, though. He's a dwarf. It's what they do. He knocked on a tree while traveling through the forest. Yeah, but just, tree, yeah. He didn't actually hear the plane, so in the middle of walking through the forest, he stopped <laughs> to say, guys, where are we going? Did you see that dragon? I shake my head in a bit of disappointment. Why are we going this way? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so a loud noise is made. Um, fortunately, Alexius is so quiet that he kind of helps work along, and uh, you eventually emerge uh, towards towards the town. So let's take a look at that. Uh, So one thing to know about this map is that the scale is a little different. The scale is, even though you're kind of filling the spaces, uh, it is a 10-foot map. Uh, Sorry, each grid space is 10 feet. Um, We won't be too, too picky here. If you want to rearrange yourselves in whatever order you feel like you were marching in, um, that would be fine. So you're just coming out of the... You followed the forest as long as you could, and then you you backed out onto the road, and you emerge at the edge of what you would consider the Greenrest uh, village proper. So do we see anything or notice anything in front of us in this opening area? Uh, not immediately. You hear screams from all over. There are people crying out for help. There are people, there are, are uh, chants. There's some, some sort of religious chanting going on, uh, perhaps from those robed individuals you saw before. Um, around you, there are a number of thatched roof homes. For some reason, I can't get into the middle of the square. Uh, hold alt, and then you can drag. Your, uh, your token's a little off square, um, so it tries to snap you to a weird place. We'll see if we can fix that before the next the next session. So how are you proceeding into town? Are you continuing to try to be quiet, or are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing as you enter town? Do we happen to see any of them, any of the raiders around us nearby? Why don't you give me a perception roll? Okay. Colchaxis is kind of crouched, but but moving quickly, still. Okay. Yeah, I'm just behind them, admiring everything, wondering where are those wizards from? What kind of robe are they wearing? Hmm. Oh, you guys need to stop cheating with your crits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do. You hear uh, amongst all. Not everyone can roll perception. Okay. I'd be cheating, because eventually right. you'll get a good roll. No, it's okay. It's one of those weird rules, because in theory, everyone can be looking around, but if you let five rolls go through, you're going to get a good one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there, there were so many crits and high rolls in that group that you absolutely <laughs> hear uh, that among all the screaming, among all the running, among all the franticness in the town, uh, there does seem to be coming some coming from that road up ahead to you on the left. And I'm going to suggest the party, if the party's not stopping while they're doing this, if you're moving while you're kind of looking around, I'd like you to go ahead and move up to, like, that first house, so kind of halfway to the intersection. And, we don't uh, see anybody yet, though, like, directly in front of us, right? You're aware that there's something up up the road on to the left, so you nothing, okay. nothing will surprise you um, in game mechanic terms. And uh, as you're doing that, you see... Uh, you see a number of people, um, and also something that I accidentally triggered. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's not really there. <laughs> uh, so here's what you see. Let me grab, get some flavor. That text. cobalt just went invisible. <laughs> Sneaky cobalt, magic cobalts. Without warning, five humans dash out from between two buildings on your left. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows, and a woman carrying a round shield and a broken spear turns and faces back in the direction from which they came. 
Eight kobolds stream out of the alley on the family's heels and fan out around the woman, who looks determined to delay the creatures for as long as possible. So, more or less what you see is these people all run down this alley. Um, The woman in blue is holding a shield and a spear. The... um, what, what you imagine is her husband is uh, leading the children, but he is limping heavily. Uh, he looks like he's heavily injured. And she's going to position herself right here at this alleyway between these houses. And uh, as mentioned in the description, there are a crap load of kobolds on her heels. In fact, you know what? They didn't all get there on that first turn. They're, they're chasing her. So we'll position them more like this. Uh, and with that in mind, we will have our first initiative roll of the evening, or afternoon as it would be. Oh god! Oh that's my horrible. god! <laughs> that's that's atrocious. Oh okay. <laughs> I thought I was the one. Well, I'm still on 13. That's still horrible. Oh, goody. Sorry, so many kobolds are going to enter a whole ton of... Well, that roll makes up for my crit roll earlier. Apparently I stopped behind this little house over here to go to the bathroom while the fight was starting. Oh! <laughs> uh, you know those stories of, like, mothers lifting cars off their children? <laughs> that are always used as, like, inspiring tales of motherhood? Uh, well, the woman who's defending her family just crit her initiative role. So, so she now picks up the house and throws it on the cover. <laughs> Uh, okay, so she will begin by. Uh... I think we're missing Rorik's initiative. Are we missing Rorik's initiative? Thanks, guys. I, I put it in. Did you have your token selected when you did it? Yeah. I'll no, no. Re-roll. What, what'd you roll? I, I rolled a natural one, but plus three, so four. Okay, up oh, there it is. I just added it, so. Okay. okay, great. Anyone else missing? It looks like one, two, three, four, five. Great. Uh, all right. Well, let's see how this goes. Um, I'm actually going to give you. I'm going to give you a surprise round. Uh, it, it, I neglected to notice that it does say that the kobolds assume that you are other raiders. So, we are. What we're going to do is we're going to run through the initiative once. Um, the woman's gonna. She's gonna get a turn. She's gonna try and club the kobold in front of her. And uh, she is going to miss. So, uh, Nicole. So what we're going to do is we're going to... This is a, what we call a surprise run. We're going to go through the whole initiative, but we're only going to have the player characters act. And then when it gets down to the to the beginning of the initiative order again, we will... Then everyone will start to act. Uh, so, yeah, Nicole. Well, I would like to pull out my short bow and shoot the uh, kobold in the middle of the intersection. Okay. Also, anyone who knows what they want to do ahead of time, you can go ahead and you can type your roll and have it ready. Um, a nine is not going to hit a kobold. Your arrow goes just wide, sailing over the kobold's shoulder. Uh, the good news is he does know that you are not friendly now. Wait, that's not good news. <laughs> the, the other one, whatever the other one is. Uh, Alexius. Okay, so... Um, so, okay, let's... So I'm going to move, um, I believe my range is 30 feet, so towards... Remember, like, each square guess, is going to be 10. Yeah. So that should be 30. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to cast Ray of Frost at the kobold in front of me. Okay, the same one that uh, Nicole just targeted? Yes. Okay. Yes. And how do I, um? I guess, what would I roll from here? So, it would depend on the text of the spell. 
I believe that is what's called an attack. Uh, that is an attack roll. I'm just going to double check for you. Ray of Frost. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. So you're going to roll 1d20 and you're going to add your proficiency, which is 2, plus your spell casting ability, which is your intelligence modifier. So I believe with your numbers that's plus 5. Yes. Okay. So I rolled a 12. A 12 will hit a kobold. So okay. now you get to roll damage. Do you know the damage for Ray of Frost? Um, on a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage, All and right. its speed is reduced by 10 feet. Okay. So, so I roll a 1d8? Yes. Um, do I put any plus whatever? Not on this, no. Okay. And I roll an 8. Maximum damage, and that was going to be enough to kill that kobold. So that kobold nice. is frozen in ice and just kind of falls and does that movie special effect where it shatters into bits. Nice. Ooh, pretty. Nah, we Shiny. Skip, we skip this huge oh, line of kobolds. And uh, Rurik. Okay, so which of these people was limping? Like, which of these tokens was it? Uh, it was the gentleman in brown that's hiding behind the house. Hiding behind the house. Okay, so can I cast Sanctuary against him? You Right now he's behind a house. Uh, so no line of sight? So no. Okay. Houses usually block line of sight. Uh, <laughs> is that tree blocking my line of sight to the woman? No. No. Okay. The kind then... of like the the, the tree top would be, but she's at the tr- trunk level, so we'll say no. But what is your? It's one hundred and forty feet. Oh, also, anyone on the left there? There's a little ruler about halfway down under the magnifying glass. If you use that tool, you can draw. A line, and oh, everyone can see the line you're drawing, but that's oh. how you, but that's how you can uh, work out the range. Oh, that's way too far off. Then it's got a thirty foot range. Um, let's see. I mean, you can move, but it's still going to be out of range this turn. Right. So I can move at twenty five feet per turn, right? Yeah. So, so what, what you can do is, if you want to move three this turn, you can move two next turn. All right. Since it's ten foot squares. Okay, so I'll go. One, two, three. Let's turn. Sure. Uh, diagonals for anyone who's curious. Diagonals still count as one. Oh. Okay. Oh, then do that. Okay. Do I have to roll for anything now, or? Uh, depends. Do you want to do something? Uh, yeah, I've got a crossbow here. I could. That sounds probably like a good shoot one. at this guy. Let's see how far off is he? To do eighty feet away. I okay. That is the range for a crossbow without. Is it? Yeah, it's eighty and three hundred and twenty. Okay, so anytime you see those two numbers on a range, the eighty means that's the normal attack, and then the higher number is how far you can shoot, but it would be with disadvantage. But since he's right at eighty, and eighty is the range, you can roll with just normal advantage. With normal, I'm sorry, without dis- disadvantage. Right. Okay, so I just uh, roll a d20 then, right? D20 plus whatever your dexterity modifier is plus whatever your proficiency is, which is 2. Alright. Plus 2. Oh, your crossbow is going to sail just as wide of the cobalt. Ah, get him uh, next time. He is, however, going to notice the crossbow that just shot at him. Uh, Talon. Um... <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to move... So, because mine's 25, I can move, like, three this time, you said, and two next time? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to keep track of that, so people, you know, just yeah. on our system. All right, then I'll move here. And I will use my short bow to attack this guy. Okay, the one that's on the woman, that's a yeah. nice choice. And... Ah, uh, no... Yeah. No, a seven is not going to quite quite hit the cobalt. Uh, Cole. Is using a skill an action? It kind of depends on what you're trying to do. So if you describe to me what you're trying to do, I will tell you before you do it if I will require that to be your action. And if- are you able to use an action to move more than... Your movement? Yes. So there's an action called dash, which lets you move your movement speed a second time. Okay, so what I would like to do, and you can tell me if this is too much or not, is move 60 feet 
and then let out a big growl, uh, basically being a um, a intimidation check. You can speak uh, as much as you want, not as much as you want, but you can say things on your turn, and since that's all you're really trying to accomplish, I will say that that's fine. I understand you're also trying to do it to, as to intimidate, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that, I'm just that's trying to look I'm... big and scary to maybe make them run or back off or something. Sure. Okay, why don't you go ahead and move wherever you're trying to move. Okay, which one are you looking at when you do this? It's probably going to want to be one of the two that's closer to you. The group over by the woman are mainly looking at her, or have they somewhat turned their attention to us? The one that's closest to you has turned your attention because you got a crossbow fired over his shoulder. The other two are a little more focused on her. What about the lead of the three coming in? Can I get him? Sure. Okay, Just... maybe I can sort of back them off or give them pause for a moment or something. So let me go ahead and roll my uh, intimidation. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. I'm going to say the roar of a dragonborn running, charging into the fight and then screaming at them. Uh, yeah. I, I believe you might have accomplished what you were trying to do. Uh, the woman is going to stab the kobold in front of her with... Uh, sorry. Sm yeah, stab him with her spear. Uh, this time she's going to hit. And that kobold is going to grab its gut as it falls to the ground. Uh, Nicole. All right, I am going to move there. Okay, and shoot the crossbow at, I mean, the short bow at that one. Okay. Twenty will absolutely hit a cobalt. And that is gonna be enough to kill a cobalt. Uh Alexius. Okay, so I am going to move uh let's see here. Uh, here gonna move here and let's see if I can hit this thing um, I'm gonna hit the cobalt closest how do I ping uh, oh. I, the one closest to the woman or the one closer to you uh, the one closest to the woman that one there we go okay yep you're pinging so, it, so. plus I believe this yeah plus five so I roll 13 that will hit and 1d8 and I rolled seven. Oh, sorry, I rolled a five. That's all right. That's enough to take out a kobold. All right, kobold turn. This one's dead, so it doesn't get a turn. Uh, the one you have, you've party has pretty much drawn the attention of all the kobolds at this point. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. One of the kobolds is going to run up to coal and. Uh, why don't I have any token actions? Do it, little scale. Give me one second while I fix a oversight here. I've never seen a cobalt up close. How interesting. He's kind of ugly. But in, a, in an exotic way. But still ugly, yes. Do you have any excuse for a dragon? <laughs> Alright, here we go. A is going to swipe a coal with its dagger. Uh, and 
17. Is that going to hit Cole? Oh, man, yeah. Oh, barely, but yeah. That's going to do 5 damage. Uh, this Cobalt is dead. This Cobalt is dead. This Cobalt is dead. This Cobalt is going to run up and take a swipe at Alexius. Son of a bitch. And he's going to crit you. Uh, and do six damage. Yeah, yep, that's... Now don't forget, he was intimidated, so if that helps at all. I, he will do three damage. That's even better. Uh, one's going to run up to Cole. You know, actually, no, I'm going to give you that. These two are going to hang back. They're going to run up, but they're going to pause. I'll give you the pause. Uh, Rurik. All right, let's see. So I'm going to not measure, so I'll do one, two, and see. So Lex, where can I see hit points that we have left? Uh, if you click on a token, you should be able to see the number. Let's see. Oh, guys, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to keep track of your hit points. You can do it. I would do it on your paper, but you can also do it on your token. Uh, so, Alexius, if you click on your token, you should see in green the number eight. Yeah. You can either type minus three to do it that way, or you can just type in the new number five. Okay. And yeah. That way, everyone it. can see uh, how everyone else is doing, so that the healers know when to do their yeah their healing stuff. Okay. Yeah, I just thought they did it. Okay. So if I click on their token, it should pop up. Who, who's token? That somewhere. Um, so I was looking at Alexius, but Cold Chactus now actually looks pretty bad. If you just click on it once, you sh I think you... Oh, maybe because oh. you can't edit it. You know what? Just, just ask the player. Okay. Uh, so, Cold Chactus, how much uh, HP do you have left? I have seven left. I'm down five. Okay. And Alexius is down three, but he started lower. I started with eight, so I'm, all, I'm at five. Okay, um, so I would like to cast Cure Wounds on Colchexus. It is a touch range spell. It is a touch range. Oh, no. I ponder at the, uh, the wisdom of learning these spells before I go into battle. <laughs> and instead I take out a crossbow and decide that uh, violence is the way to go here. Take aim at the cobalt closest to Alexius. Sure. And I attempt to hit it. 17 will hit. All right. And uh, oh. All right. Six damage. That's going to kill that cobalt. Crossbow sinks into its chest and it falls flat on the ground. Uh, Talon. Um, is there any kind of, like, how much does it take to switch out weapons? Uh, to stow a weapon is an action. To take out a new weapon is an action. So, unfortunately, it does mean it's... Now, if you want to just drop one of your weapons and then draw the new one, that's fine. That can be done in one and still have your action left. Um, okay, I'm going to use my short bow and attack... Well, sorry, this guy. Okay. Uh, Son of a... Now, Talon <laughs> is a... Talon is a halfling. Halflings have a trait called Lucky. Lucky means you reroll ability checks that result in a 1. Oh, okay, I like that. Nice. Uh, and roll 20, if you hit up, you get the last command you rolled. Now, this time you missed with a 10, and I can't do anything to help you with that. Okay. But at least I didn't shoot my foot. Right. Uh, Cole, I'm going to have a Cobalt face-to-face -face with you. You made a good hit, little Cobalt, but now it's my turn. And you hit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. You rolled the damage and the attack. Okay, 23 will definitely hit. I thought you rolled an 8. Oh, God. Uh, 
23 hits and 8 will just obliterate uh, a significant portion of this kobold's body. Uh, the woman that you saw is going to back into the alley and she's just holding the shield and the, the spear in front of her. Uh, Nicole. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I can I move after my attack? I'm sorry. Yes, you can. We'll figure out your token. How to center recenter it. Otherwise we're gonna yeah, we'll get pings the whole time. Uh sorry. No, it's okay. Uh Nicole. Okay. That changed my action. I'm going to I'm gonna don't forget the kobolds are there. I'm just gonna delete these dead ones so that it's not like all over the board. I accidentally just deleted one of your players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went invisible. Oh god, Cole, where'd you go? Like, oh, oh my god, you're so big. I didn't know you'd use magic. <laughs> uh, you know what, Cole, if you don't mind the character being a little distorted and looking a little puny, um, if I just let him sink to the grid, it'll be Yeah, that's fine for now. Okay. All right, so as I was saying, Nicole. Okay, so I'm going to move in front of this kobold here and drop the short bow and grab my rapier and dagger and stab him. You can draw one, you can't draw both. I'll draw the rapier. Okay. Now you will get sneak attack on this because you have an ally within five feet. Right. And that's not going to hit. No, so don't even worry about the sneak attack. Uh, okay, Alexius. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move over here. I think. Oh, how do I turn? Eh, doesn't matter. Anyways. Uh, if you and... click, there's a little like um, square that's off from the... There's like eight around you, and then there's one on the side. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to attack this guy right. with he, Ice Frost or Ray of Frost. He's going to have a little bit of cover from Nicole being in the way. Okay, so... It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means his AC will be a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, plus five. Eleven. Eleven wouldn't have hit even if he didn't have cover. Dang, so. okay. Uh, Cobalt turn. One's going to attack Cole with a dagger. And 16. That is going to hit, isn't it? Three damage to Cole. Who's giving me the silent treatment? It's because you made him disappear earlier. <laughs> uh, well, while we're waiting for him to catch up. I'm sorry, what happened? You got hit for three. Oh, those jerks. Uh -huh. <laughs> The other one's going to stab at your rogue with its dagger. Uh, nine, which can't conceivably hit. No, not even close. Oh, sorry, it's a 22. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know how you get sneak attack if they're within, you have an ally within five feet? Kobolds get advantage if they have an ally within five feet. This is going to hurt. Yeah, um, we're, we're going to say in character what you're noticing is that these kobolds work together really well but out of character in game mechanic sense um, don't let kobolds gang up on you uh, so that is going to be 5 damage to Nicole alright at least the, their turn's over you guys got rid of a lot of them I work all right. So for movements, we're alternating two and then three and then two and three, right? Because it's for the, the spacing. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So I'm going to run over here. One, two, three. Now I'm adjacent to Colchaxis. So I can yes. use my Cure Wounds spell on him. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Um, what do I have to do to do that? You have to roll dice. <laughs> okay. 1d8 <laughs> plus your spellcasting ability modifier. So cleric spellcasting is wisdom, so 1d8 plus whatever your wisdom modifier is. Okay. Two, ah, three. Okay. So do that. And oh, goodness. 11. So that's probably going to put Cole back at full health. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Talon. All right. 
I'm gonna move. No, wait. Just so you guys know, you the rogues. Uh, your sneak attack works on ranged weapons as well. All right. I'm gonna move there, and then I'm gonna attack that guy. Okay. Oh my gosh, I think I hit something. You did. And make sure you add a d6 to your damage roll. All right. Because 18 definitely hits. Oh, sorry. Doesn't matter. He's dead. Okay. They, I thought they, just hitting the dice would change in the box, but it didn't. Ah. But I'll take dead either way. Nicole, you have the last remaining kobold in front of you. Actually, I think Cole's in front of me. Oh, when I removed him from the initial... When I deleted his token. Okay. Thank you for guys for noticing. Uh, no, I was at one, so I go last. Well, either way, you missed a turn. There you go. Okay. Here, let's just cycle through. There you go. Cole's turn. Oh, I will uh, hit a little sideways. Well, diagonal, not sideways. Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> well, we can even assume you might turn. You're not required to stand on grid lines. 24 will obliterate... Holy crap. 2d6 plus 3? Yeah. It's a great sword. I, I just cut him in half, I think. You had a great sword at level 1? Yeah. It says I can take a martial weapon. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, no, that cobalt is, is just a pile of goo um, at this point. <laughs> Gross. It's pretty gross. It's pretty gross. So that's how they look like when they're squished. That's what the Good inside of a cobalt is. I will I make I notes of this. Now. So well done, everyone, for surviving your first combat. Woohoo! Woo! Uh, at this point, we are effectively out of initiative order. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. And you're... If you haven't figured it out, rules tighten up during combat, but then once you're out of combat, it's we're back to... What would you like to do? Well, you should probably uh, approach the townspeople to check if they're okay. Who's going to walk up? Big scary well, dragonborn. A little I will approach guy. the guy that has the bum leg, too. Okay. I mean, they're all kind of together. Yeah, I'll walk over there as well, because I figured a human might get a better reception than any other creatures, especially since they're getting attacked by some weird things. For sure. sure. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run up and check on the children. Okay. As the cleric, I'll come over and see if anyone needs anyone. Yeah, you, so you surround them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, i you... talking to them. Can I uh, maybe gain some health back? Yeah. Uh, so there, the options here are you have healing potions... Uh, two of your party have healing potions that they can freely give. Uh, if you want your cleric to burn another spell, that's the option. Nobody use a fighter, so nobody has the second wind ability. So pretty much your options are healing potions. And uh, Cole and Rurik have one. Either of you willing to part with it? I think I'm okay for now, so I'll stick with the five for now. How far are you down? I got three hit points. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many casts do I get of my spells? You believe you get two. Two? Yeah. Is anyone down five hit points? I'm uh, down five hit points. Yeah, I can I can hand off my potion of healing. Yeah, that's true. You also have your paladin's um, very light healing ability. Yeah, let me use my lay on hands to give you back five hit points because that's all it can do, okay. and then we're not wasting uh, a potion of healing. If I can make, I'm going to make. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to make a DM suggestion. If you give him four hit points and you keep one, uh, sometimes the difference between having zero hit points and being unconscious and having one hit point and being able to run on your own can be the, a world of difference. Good meaning, point. meaning if you keep you one, four. you can get somebody off from being unconscious. Right, right. No, that's a good idea. All right, so I'm giving yeah, you back four hit idea. points. Okay. And it, it's for all practical purposes, you know. 
Now, if he gets hit for exactly seven, it'll be annoying, but... I can bring him back up. But you, but you can bring him back up, so... Uh, okay, so here's where you learn that I'm awful at voices, so I'm not going to attempt to voice these, <laughs> these NPCs. Uh, for big ones, I'll at least do the narrative, but for, for minor... For minor interactions, I'll probably just uh, narrate, you know, the tone and content of the discussion. Um, so you you walk up to this family. Um, the woman's a little apprehensive at first, kind of holding the shield and spear in front of her, but you're able to easily uh, assuade her fears. And she did see you fighting the kobolds. Uh, the thing is, she's seen a lot of new faces tonight, and most of them haven't been very nice. So it takes a few moments, but you're able to, to uh, assuade her fears. Uh, the children seem fine. Um, the husband has a chunk missing out of his leg. It looks like something was a chunk was bitten out of his leg. Um, and you can't help but notice that the kobolds have lots of sharp, pointy teeth and wonder if there might be a connection there. <laughs> uh, she she thanks you for coming along when you did. She she's, doesn't know what she would have done um, if you hadn't shown up. And is very appreciative. She also tells you that uh, they're trying to get to the keep in the middle of town. It's the it's the only safe place, and it's where everyone was told to go if there was ever something like this happening. Um, and yep. she's she's going to outright ask you if you'll if you'll help them get there. As I squat, as Kolchaksa squats down and pulls the sharp canines out of the kobold I'm standing on, I say yes, of course we'll help you. Okay, that kind of both bothers her and and relaxes her. <laughs> and I say, yes, I am curious as to where these things are coming from and why. If the keep is where everyone is, that's most likely where we'll find out. So I say, let's go. Hey guys, do we want to search the kobolds? Yeah, we should probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, you do search the bodies. It takes a couple minutes um, to go through them all, because there were so many. And But you don't really find a whole lot. You find about four gold pieces among all of them, uh, which is a pretty trivial amount and hard to divide between five people. <laughs> um, I'm, I'll keep track of what you guys have as, like, party loot, and then at the towards the end of the session we can talk about splitting that up. Cool. Thanks. Um, so... Uh, the woman is uh, Lenan, and she's going to suggest you proceed uh, south and then turn east. Um, if you zoom out on the map a bit, you can you can easily see what she's talking about. Uh, she says that's the that's the fastest way to the keep. Then again, she's operating on that's the fastest way to the keep when the town is not full of raiders. Uh, speaking of, in the distance, you do hear the, the um, agonizing scream of a, a man's voice. I think we should move. I suggest we follow that path, but stay like in between houses and not on the road. Okay. So, uh, with that in mind, why doesn't everyone make a... Let me just give a, let me put a little line here. Uh, I walk up to the guy with the chunk missing, mm -hmm. and I say, uh, and I put my sword on my back, and I say, uh, with your permission, sir, may I carry you? And he's uh, a little scared because he's never seen a dragonborn before, uh, but he will he will nod. Okay, so well, I try to least... pick him up a little bit. Sure, or sure. not a little bit. But are, are you are you actually picking him up, or are you doing? Are you having him like put his arm over your shoulder so you can help him? Uh, I was going to pick him up so we could move a little faster. Okay, move a little class. Uh, the children are also going to be a little slow, but... Uh... I'll wrangle the children. Okay. Keep the... You, know. You're wrangling them, not carrying them, though, right? <laughs> right, right. Okay. Uh, it would be interesting to see me carry three children. Yes. Um, so it would be. Juggle them as you go. <laughs> uh, so, uh, moving quite quickly but quietly between the houses over backyards uh, following the general path of the road but not on the road itself uh, could the party make a stealth roll for me I'm the least stealthy rogue 
Party did it pretty well. I'm still waiting on one. Nope, we got all five. Uh, that's not horrible though. You get enough. You, you get a crit in there and enough over twenties to cancel to to help out with the thirteens and fourteens. And you're only going to be so stealthy because now you've got civilians with you and so forth. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and move everybody. You all as a party for some reason staying in the exact same orientation. <laughs> um, <laughs> We've uh, practiced this. Yeah. Uh, you you march down, and as you're moving kind of behind these houses, uh, you do notice in the the street on the other side of the houses there is a group of uh, of raiders. Uh, it, there are uh, five kobolds that you can see. And there's also somebody dressed in uh, robes. Uh, it's, they're brown in the, the map, but they're actually purple. Can we see what they're doing? Uh, yeah, they appear to be uh, carrying some bags of stuff. You don't know what's in the bags, but they're carrying bags of stuff. Um, the, kobold, the, the cultist is actually singing, which is part of the reason that you saw him so easily. Um, some sort of religious chant. Uh, and the kobolds are kind of like trying to repeat it, but the chants in common, and they don't really speak common, they only speak draconic. Is the cultist looking like in our direction? Is that what? Oh, uh, no, no, they don't. Oh, okay. sorry. It's pretty clear to you that they don't know you're here. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I roll to f see what they're saying or what the cultist is singing or whatever? Uh, sure, make a religion check. Or. Uh... Uh, religion or arcana. Okay, and what is it? It's a 1d28 here? Plus whatever your modifier is, yes. Okay. So, let me check. So, 1d20 plus 5. And are they heading away from the they're heading keep to the, or towards it? They're actually heading away from the keep to the west. Okay. Oh god, that's horrible. Yeah, was you, that an arcana check? Uh, that was religion. Yeah, you have, you have no idea what this is. Well, I mean, if you said that they were speaking Draconic, right? No, I said the kobolds only speak Draconic, so they're having trouble mimicking the chant that's in common. Okay, can I um, see what they're saying? Because I speak Draconic. Oh, so. so what I mean is, it's kind of like when a um, uh, when a bird is saying things in English. You know, what the hell? Why am I, like I'm a parrot or something? Thank you. It's trying to mimic. I was, I kept, my brain kept going to parakeet. I knew that was wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they're trying to, they're mimicking the noises in common that the cultist is making. Okay. But, yeah. It's and just coming out religion as incomprehensible. Check. I'll let, I'll let one more religion check go, go through. Wow, we suck. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mean, the actual words you can hear are basically, hail the great one, hail the great queen. Um, but no idea who those people are. No, you're not really sure what you, what it's referring to. Okay. I was thinking, do we want to just let them go by since we have these kids and the adult and the injured? Yeah, so it would not be that great for us to fight if we have to worry about protecting these people. Well, we could have them go hide in the trees behind us while we dispatch this bunch. I don't want to leave the kids, so I suggest we let them pass by us. And plus, this is on the main road, so there is bound to be more where they came from. So let's sneak behind the houses. Can, like, still going. Well, it's against my better judgment, but all right. Let's keep these people safe. Okay, and sure enough, the party continues to move down the road. You're not positioned exactly as I put you. That was mostly a copy and paste kind of thing. But yeah, you're, you're hiding behind the houses, and uh, sure enough, within a few moments, the... They seem to have moved on to a safe distance where you would be able to move without drawing too much attention. Um, you do hear a kind of a quiet whimpering noise uh, coming from one of the houses, and uh, when you look inside, there are do more some more of that copy and paste. There, you find two more children. For some reason, they're all wearing the same shirt. They were having a sale. I yeah. yield, maybe. <laughs> Uh, Yield, baby. You find uh, another family, again, color-coded. Um, 
There are another. There are now four more of them. These guys are all Starfleet, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the kids are all the red shirts. <laughs> oh no. no, no. Uh, Do okay. the new people have any weapons or? Uh, they they don't. They just look like okay. merchants and and villagers and farmers and so forth. Okay. I guess onward to the keep. Okay, so you you take a moment, you relay to them the plan to head to the keep, which is conveniently their plan as well. And... God, there's a lot of you now. Alright, so let's put them all down in this area behind this house, because you've already established that your technique is to stay between the homes and not put anyone at too much undue risk. You guys are kind of back here at this house working out uh, how to advance forward. Um, Now. Which road is the keep down? Uh, You got to keep heading uh, east. Okay. It's in the Following general. the same big road. Yeah, it's just generally to the east. Okay. Um, now, on this road, um, I would like Nicole to make a perception roll. Very nice. Uh, 20 will definitely do. There are... There's another group of raiders coming. Um... The the mulls of the two kobolds that are leading the group are uh, they're very bloody, uh, as if they've been using their teeth to attack something or so forth. Uh, behind them is also a another robed figure, and there appears to be another kind of kobold-looking thing, except it has wings on it. It's walking, but it has wings. No, so this is a little bit of a smaller group than the last one. Uh, what is your plan for dealing with this? They are also moving. They're also moving west. Uh, I suggest we hide the people behind the house that we're near, that like so they are kind of more blocked. Then we attack them. I'm gonna add one more detail to this map. If you guys just give me a second. Um, remember at the beginning, the dragon like attacked a house with lightning and the roof collapsed and it was on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you you kind of work out mentally from the distance you've moved, is that house uh, right there towards the eastern part of the map. Uh, okay, so you guys want to hide everyone again? Um, the house we're right next to, um, I'd like to look inside and see if there's anything there. Maybe we can put the people inside it. Okay, sure. Uh, go ahead and do a... You can either use a perception or investigation. Um, whichever one. Reception. Okay. It's kind of two techniques. One is spotting things. One is, you know, looking around things. 24. Uh, you look around. You see that this house looks like it's been ransacked. Um, the door is off. It's, the front door is off. It, you're looking through a window in the back. The door is on the other side of the the, the home. But there's it's, one, it's kind of like one big space, so you can see all the way through. Uh, the door looks like it's been smashed in. Uh, the the beds have been flipped. Uh, and whatever meager furniture this family had has been flipped over. Um, but otherwise, the walls are intact. I mean, it's a perfectly suitable hiding place. So, like I said, maybe put them inside, have them hide in there, and take out that group on the way through. Let's mm-hmm. hide them in the house. All right. Uh, so it's going to take a little doing to do this because you're going to have to kind of like push the kids over. Well, I guess here's the question. Are you guys going to help doing that, or are you going to leave the adults to get the kids in there while you set up for the attack? Or is there a third plan? I mean, we can just have them start going in there. I I would say, like, part of some of us help them get in, and, like, one or two of us keep watch for how close the enemies get. Yeah, I, I put the guy with the leg down, and I tell the woman with the shield, like, get them in the house. Okay. Um, I'll keep an eye on the uh, the people coming down the street. All right. So you start um, overseeing and otherwise uh, 
getting the Helping kids in the house. Helping children climb on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Use your imagination. And uh, most of them, luckily, are inside by the time. Now, the, the group here is actually going to march to the east and actually then turn south down the road that's in front of the house. So that's, nope. that was helpful because, of course, you're... Uh, as long as the kids stay out of the view of the doorway, at least the rest of the families are behind the house. Um, I suggest we get the injured guy in the house first, too. I kind of, yeah, I put one of him in. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he, he's, he's in the he's house. In he, he was still helping pull the kids in, but, um, you know, that was a better place for him than being one of the last ones through. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I need everyone to make a another line here, another uh, stealth roll. I am not stealthy. Uh, I'm even less stealthy. <laughs> and getting these people into this house oh, is man. very it's loud. Just not going <laughs> Kids are screaming and crying. Kids screaming and crying, and you absolutely draw the attention of the party that's passing the house. And so, for the second time this evening, could everyone kindly roll initiative? This is why I hate children. Interesting. I did not jot down the stats for the roped men. Roped His armor class is a ten. Yeah, it might be. And he's got one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> That's less likely to be true. He's a fourth edition minion. <laughs> he's so hurt okay. after fighting some people. You can be optimistic. I'll tell you this, they're horrible at uh, initiative rolls. Okay, is that everyone? I have one, two, three, four players. Who am I missing again? Uh, Rurik. I rolled. We're going to have to check out your uh, macro before too long. But that's Did cool. you have your character clicked on? Let's see. Try it again. Yeah, it always works the second time. But you rolled a 17. I'll give you the 17. Okay, yes. I don't like this uh, second number <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, because uh, now it, Rurik and Alexius both rolled the same number, so you guys can choose between you who goes first. Um, if you want to go first, Rurik, I have no issues with that. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I can go first. Now, in theory, so what you've what you've noticed is that they've they've you've drawn their attention. You know that they know you're here. Um, they're not getting a surprise round because you specifically said you were watching them approach. You were keeping an eye on their approach, so you knew when they were tipped off. Yay! So we just go right into initiative order. All right. So, okay. So I am going to move. Let's see. So 10, 20, sort of. Okay, I'll alternate two and threes. Then, let's see, do I have line of sight here? No, I don't. Ah. Uh, no, it's fine. You can peek around the corner. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to pull out my crossbow and take a shot at the southernmost kobold. All right. Uh, let's see, is this 1d20 plus 2? Uh, plus your dexterity, plus your proficiency. Okay. So, if you don't have any dexterity, then it would be plus 2. Okay, good. Not good. Okay, never mind. Hmm. Nope. Your crossbow lands in the house behind the kobold. Alexius. <sighs> okay, um... So, I think I'm going to move... Actually, I should get that so I can actually move. 
I'm going to move here. And is the wing cobalt in my sight, even though that tree's there? I'm going to give him partial cover from the tree, but you're still able to make a shot. Or, okay. Or an att- whatever attack. So, yeah, I'm going to cast Ray of Frost. So that's... Taking kind of long to roll that dice. 14. 14 on a winged kobold will hit. Okay, and one day I will remember all of these numbers, and that's mm-hmm. a 1d8 damage. If you decide you really like this, they do sell for like 10 or $15 uh, cards, like poker size cards that come with Okay. You can pull out whatever spells you know. Nice. Um, I rolled a 3 damage. But... All right. Because it did hit, he is his speed is reduced by ten feet All right. until the start of my next turn. I will just I'm going to put a little snail on him. Uh, do me a favor and remind me if you if you remember. One of us should remember uh, that at the end of your next turn, that's over. Yes, uh, Nicole. Um, <laughs> is the cultist have cover? A little bit. Um, I'm still going to shoot him with my short bow. There are two levels of cover. Uh, there's half cover, which grants them plus two to their AC, and there is uh, three quarters cover, which is plus five, and then there's full cover, which you just can't hit. Okay. So just just for our people who are learning. Uh, you rolled a 16, which is going to hit. Did seven. And then I'd like to just shuffle right behind this house. Okay. Uh, cobalt phase. So five, ten, no, ten, sorry, ten, twenty, thirty. Then he'll dash. Get right up on Rourke. Ten, twenty, thirty, ten, twenty, thirty. They're going to do that. Oh, so they, they both dashed, uh, so they don't get to take any actions. Uh, Talon. <clears throat> uh, can we split our movement row? Like move, attack, move? Yes, you can. All right. Um, I'm going to move... Oh, let me... Here. I'm going to attack with my short sword. Twelve will hit a cobalt. My damage is... That will kill the cobalt. Yay! And I'm going to move here. Okay. Cold chests. All right, I think I'm going to dash over toward them. Getting right up in the cultist's face. Uh, the winged kobold is going to take to the air and move 20. He's going to dash, but because he is slowed, he does not get very far. Uh, the cultist will step up and try to swing its scimitar at Colchaxis. 17. Which I believe hits. That hits, yep. For 5 damage. Uh, Rurik, back around to you. You've got a kobold staring you in the face. Oh, staring me in the face. Uh, soon. Let's see. I can't change weapons, though, unless I drop my weapon, right? Right. So you'd have uh, to use your your interaction <laughs> on a future turn to pick it up. Or leave it behind. Right. If you ever drop a weapon, I always assume you pick it up at the end of the fight, so... Okay, good. I'm not good like, know. haha, you forgot six sessions ago to tell me you were picking up your your scimitar, so now you don't have it. Like, that's ridiculous. All right. Well, this guy's right in my face. Um, there's no minimum range on shooting him in the face with the crossbow, right? Uh, yes, there is. If you're shooting something at that is uh, in melee range of you, you are at disadvantage on the shot. Well, in that case, I am going to move back that way, which I'm pointing. I'm okay. to do this. If you want it now, so we're getting into some of the nuances of uh, 
let me explain a couple things about how the mechanics of this um, face-to-face duel between Rurik and the Cobalt will work. If you want to shoot him, you can. It's just a disadvantage. That means you roll the roll twice, mm-hmm. and we use the lowest number. Uh, there is a way to do that in roll 20. Uh, I'll type it out without the forward slash. It's roll 2d20 key KL1. So if I do that, mm-hmm. roll... 2d20. If, well, if I do that with the the forward slash 2d20 kl, uh, it simply means roll 2d20, keep the lowest one. Okay. And then you'd add your modifier at the end of that. Uh, there's also kh for keep highest, which is if you have advantage. If you're choosing not to do that, if you're choosing to move away, uh, if you're in melee range with somebody and you step out of their melee attack range, you provoke an attack, meaning you're running away, so they get to try and stab you in the back. You can avoid that if you take the disengage action. It requires you to use your action, so you couldn't also attack this turn. But it more or less means you're you're moving away carefully, you know, while while keeping your eye on the enemy, so they don't get an opportunity to attack you. Mm-hmm. So you got okay. a couple you got a couple bad decisions in front of you. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Um... You can move away and then attack, but he'll have an opportunity to attack you. By the way, if he if he manages to hit you, you stop moving, so you'd still be in range. This is shoot him in the face. Uh, I could shoot him. I have a warhammer. I could just smash him with, but then I drop my crossbow. So, eh. um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, disadvantage roll. So I'll try to shoot him with the crossbow. All right. So, the twenty KL one, and oh my goodness! Then normally, you would add plus two to that, but with a two, um, the the plus two bonus isn't going to do much for you. Uh, not so much. Okay. All right. So he, you put it in his face, but he manages to dodge his head to the side and avoid getting hit. Uh, Alexius. Okay. Um. If I move towards that guy and try to ap- attack the Cobalt by Rorik, will that be will that affect my line of sight in any way? Sorry, yeah. if you So if I move where this guy is? You can't really move where he is. Well, behind him here, sorry. Um and I try to attack the Cobalt where Rorik is, will that affect my line of sight? I will say that these people are smart enough to get the hell out of your way. Okay. So Claire. you can go ahead and yeah, you can do that. Yeah, so I'll do that. Let's, let me make sure that's I mean, that should be the right line, but yeah, perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna attack that one. Uh, Twenty plus five. I don't know how to type properly. So that's a fifteen. Fifteen will hit a cobalt. They're very squishy. They're not that squishy. <laughs> Roll the one. All right, so you annoy a cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> he felt like a light chill on his face and was like, what is that? Uh, Nicole. All right, um, I'm going to step back out and shoot the cultist. All right. Did I decide the race he was? Uh, that is not going to hit. Uh, this cobalt is dead. We'll take him out of initiative order. The other one is going to try and stab Rourke with its dagger. Thirteen. That will not hit Rourke, because he's got a crazy 18 AC. Because he's in heavy armor. Oh, yes. In the future, when you roll a stealth roll, you get to do so at disadvantage. Because heavy metal armor makes a lot of noise. I forgot about that rule. I didn't forget about the rule. I forgot about the implications of that rule. So, in the future, when we need to roll stealth, you do the t- roll 2d20, keep lowest one, and then add your stealth. Okay. Uh, okay, so the Cobalt is going to 13 miss you, um, and we are to Talon. Alright, I'm going to move... Whoops. Move yeah, here. The, the roller tool is great, but you always forget to take it off. Uh, and I'm going to attack the cobalt with my short sword for 21. 21 will hit, and you'll get sneak attack. 
if you even need it. No, you... Well, didn't hurt to have it, but either way, it is obliterated. Whoa! Uh, Colchaxis. Alright, I'm going to attack this guy. Ten is not... Oh, uh, oh, crit! Okay. I gotta double check your damage. I know that sounds right. I'm just gonna double check it. Not right now, but... Um, so, we have yeah, our no first problem. attack crit of the night. And... 2d6 plus 3. You're gonna roll another 2d6. And we're gonna add it on... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, we're not, because the cultist has two hit points. But the way we normally handle crits is his normal damage was 2d6 plus 3, so his crit damage is 4d6 plus 3. You double the number of dice. Uh, you, oh, gotcha. Okay. You, don't, you just don't double the modifier. So, yeah, he's he is goo. He is... You know in, you know in Star, Tra uh, Star Wars <laughs> when Obi-Wan just disappears and his robes fall to the ground? That's what you did to him. Somehow he's just robes now. <laughs> That's... You just uh I poke his robes with my toe. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Wing Cobalt is going to maybe get to play D D this game. Uh five or ten twenty. And he has this heavy stone in his hand. And he from from above Nicole is going to drop it on Nicole. But he's gonna miss because he only rolled a seven. <laughs> Uh, the cultist is dead of work. Nothing immediately threatening you where you are. Except maybe sleepiness. There you go. Yes. Uh, the mute button is both a blessing and a curse. Ah. All right. So... Um, all right, so I'm going to wander up past the house along the backside again. So here we go one, two, and then let's see, is this? Yeah, three. And let's see. So this wing cobalt, he's in the air. Can I, do I have line of sight with the mm, roof here? No, he's not that high. He's not only about high. like, okay. he's maybe 10, 12, 15 feet in the, in the air. All right. He's probably out um, towards the roof level, but... Well, there is not very much that I can do, then. So anytime there's genuinely nothing you can do, one option you have, uh, aside from dashing, which would let you move again, is to go... What, what we say is go defensive. I think the official action is um, defend or something along those lines. Anytime you're defending, uh, any attacks made against you are a disadvantage. Oh. Now, there's, there's nobody there really attacking you, but... Instead of literally just doing nothing, uh, in case somebody were to pop out of the nowhere, or one of the kids was rabid and bit you, or whatever, uh, <laughs> that never happens. No, uh, that would be that. That just you know, it, it's helpful to have in those situations. All right. Well, then I will defend this turn. All right, Alexius. Okay, and um, do I have any line of sight to the wind cobalt? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay, so I'm just going to attack him with a ray of frost. So that's uh, thirteen. That will that will hit. Okay, and eight damage. He plummets to the ground, dragged there by the sack of rocks that he was attempting to fly with, so he could drop them on people, and it just splats him into the ground. And once again, you appear to have taken care of the the raiders that were attacking you and your newfound friends. Also, at some point during that fight, uh, we'll say all of the villagers were able to make it into the house. Just clear up the... There you go. So, out of initiative order, you guys are more or less in the same situation you were before. Uh, you're heading east. You can you can see the keep. It's not far now. Okay. Um. Can I search the cultists or whatever's left to see if the if they had anything on them? Yes, you can. Uh, these cultists uh, were on their way. They're, they've been much more successful at their trick or treating. They have collectively 
30 gold on them. So, Ooh. you must have caught the other group just starting the yeah. raiding, and this group uh, must have been a lot, little more successful. Do they have any, like, holy symbols or signage or anything like that on them? Uh, the robed person uh, did. It has a, um, what seems to be a symbol of a, a few different dragons. There's, there's a number of dragon heads on it. Um, if you want to learn more, you could do a religion check. Or you could show it to somebody else who was maybe trained in it. I don't know if you are or aren't. I am, but I rolled poorly. Roll again. I'm going to give you advantage. Slightly better. Yeah, you... Uh, can, can I get one more religion check from somebody else? Um, I can do it since I guess I was looking through and through yeah. stuff. Let's hopefully this works out well. Oh dear. 18. 18. There we go. Uh, you recognize nice. what what first looks like to be a a symbol like worked into part of the um, the uniform that is uh, a number of different five different dragons. It's actually you recognize this as a symbol of Tiamat, the god of evil dragons, uh, who is said to be have five dragon heads, one for each chromatic color of dragon: uh, white, black, blue, red. And uh, green and blue, green. Yeah, thank you. The five different colored chromatic dragons. Uh, this is her symbol, and with an eighteen, you also know that she's not much. Most people don't worry about her too much because she's been um, locked away in a prison in the nine hells. But uh, it is interesting that there are people wearing her symbol, and. Uh, you think these people may be part of the cult of the dragon. How interesting. Mm -hmm. All my books, all the books I've ever read said that they were just legends and tales. Mm -hmm. But then what are they doing here? Curious Did you say this was a holy symbol or it was a symbol on their clothing? Uh, it's more of a symbol worked into their clothing. It's not a, uh, it's not like a symbol used for casting. Okay, Can I'm going to take my dagger and kind of cut the well, unless you want to keep the robe, but I was yeah, I was saying we could the keep the out. robe. We could keep the okay, robe yeah, just we can in keep case. The robe. Yeah, that's fine. We um need it for anything later on. All right, you guys have one slightly blood-soaked cultist uniform. Sweet trophies. <laughs> okay, um, so if anyone else doesn't have anything else to do, I guess we can continue on towards the keep. Sounds good. Do we want to scout ahead or just all go in a group? Um, I think since we're close to the tower, that's probably where these demons or whatever they are would probably want to go next to. So I, we can probably stealth. Or some of us can stealth. Or I attempt to stealth. stealth. I say we keep going like through the backyards of the houses, like past the burning thing. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, does, is somebody going to scout ahead, or are you just going to all go as a group? I'll scout ahead. Okay. Why don't you move up too. towards, like, that house with the fire, into those kind of yards between the houses uh, where the where the fire is. And the fire is billowing smoke and so forth. And I'm going to but it actually scout with him. The smoke actually provides a certain amount of cover, so it's actually, in a way, helpful. Uh, okay, the, the way it looks... I'm going to go with him and stealth. Mm -hmm. Rogue's doing roguey things. <laughs> I'm just going to run up behind the fire. Okay. So partially obscured by smoke, uh, aiding aiding your, your stealthiness. Uh, the way here, it seems quiet. Um, the roar of the fire seems to be masking your movement. The smoke seems to be masking uh, the ability. A little bit your ability to see, but you I imagine you're pretty obscured from anyone who might be looking for you. Uh, so if you want to, I'm sure you arranged a signal ahead of time. Um, yeah, I'm going to wave them over. Okay. So probably with, I imagine with all the civilians uh, in tow. We're as quiet as a freight train. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're avoiding the fire, of course. Oops. 
I'm going to move on to the next house. Sure. Yeah, everyone's going to kind of stay with you, and we'll switch to the next map momentarily. Uh, however, uh, Rurik, as everyone, you're, you seem to be in a little bit in the behind, not in the behind, a little bit behind everyone <laughs> else. Crazy. Yeah. Um, as you run past the, the house with fire, uh, the house that's on fire, um, you, you almost don't hear it. Uh, but just as you're about to, to walk completely past it, you make out what sounds almost like a voice and, and it stops you in your tracks and uh, turning your ear towards the, the fire, um, it suddenly becomes much clearer and you can hear the voice of a woman crying out for help, uh, repeatedly saying, my son, my son, please help my son. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> so I call the fellow adventure is over. There's someone stuck in this house. Um, can I cast a ray of frost to sort of try to dampen the flames or reduce the heat? Is it actively burning or just smoldering? Um, there, it, it, there's a lot of smoke. You think it's probably not as much of an inferno as the tokens would suggest. Okay. Um, it was definitely set ablaze when it was hit by lightning, and the well, look, it looks like the roof has collapsed. That's partially why I put the flame there, so you wouldn't see a roof, um, or as much of a roof. Uh, it looks like the main support beam for the roof has fallen uh, into the house, which, you know, a lot of the thatch and everything that made up the roof fall, fell in with it, and then either ignited by the lightning or ignited by, you know, cooking fire or whatever was in the house. Um, but thatch isn't as burnable as, as it would seem. Um, so there's a lot of smoldering, a lot of smoke, and some fire inside the house. Okay, um, so I've got a resistance cantrip. Does that apply to fire damage? One sec. Um, so if I were to cast resistance on someone so that they would be resistant to fire damage and like, have them run in there, would that work? I'm just double-checking resistance. Uh, resistance adds to a saving throw. Okay, so it wouldn't necessarily... Uh, it... There's a decent chance if somebody would in, in, there, in there that they'd have to make a saving throw. So it's not actually a bad idea, especially given it's a cantrip. There's really no negative to it. Um, just so that nobody's under misconceptions, nobody hears this voice except Rorik. Now, again, it was faint at one point, and then it was loud, but it could be, you now it's, you know, it's kind of going in and out. Uh, but, but, oh, that's but, Rurik, but Rurik did tell you there's somebody trapped in this house. I'm just saying none of the rest of you, all yeah. the rest of you ran by the house without hearing anything. Hmm. Okay. So nobody else, like, so as Talon comes over here to the house, um, am I able to hear it? And then he doesn't hear it. Uh, at this point, Rurik can't really hear the voice either. Uh, okay. It was like it had, there was a moment where she was able to cry out for help. Um, Hmm. But now you don't hear anything. Now, well, so you I, never heard anything, and Rourke doesn't hear it either. Uh, so Rourke, cast Rourke, you feel a, very concerned for this person, by the way. Yes. Um, all right, so I can cast the uh, resistance on myself, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So I would like to cast resistance on myself as I prepare to dash into this house, uh, approaching the voice, since I'm the only one who can actually hear it right now. All right, so what we'll do is we'll put a little icon on you, um, and I'll little wavy thing. Oh, except that went on the house. Oh. That went on the fire by accident. The fire is now <laughs> resistant to fire. All right. Oh, okay. I see what I didn't do. I didn't move these to the... I usually use the, move these things to the map layer. There we go. Now I can select a token without stupid things getting in the way. There we go. You're resistant. Hooray. Uh, so, are you, are you entering the house? Yes. All right. So, the rest of you... Uh, basically see Rurik run into, say, there's somebody trapped, and he runs into a burning house. Um, very little context, uh, because yeah. you didn't hear the voice. Uh, but Rourke goes in, and immediately the smoke uh, fills your lungs, your eyes. Uh, if it could fill your ears, it would. Or rather, if filling your ears actually affected your hearing, it would. Uh, but your, eye, you know, your eyes burn, and so forth. Um, and I imagine intelligently you probably get down as low as you can. Uh, trying to get under the smoke. Um, why don't you make an investigation roll for me? Okay. Uh, you're searching uh, through this house. 
Luckily, it's not a huge house. Fifteen, that's not bad. Um, after a few minutes of searching and, and coughing through the smoke, um, you come across uh, the the body of a, of a woman um, and kind of draped over her. Uh, well, the, the woman's lying on the ground, um, face down on her, or, uh, face up on her back, and um, the roof beam is laying on the floor uh, next to her, or a huge chunk of it, uh, this thick timber. Um, and uh, behind her head, there's a large pool of, of blood um, that seems to have, one way or the other, gotten out of her body. Uh, draped over her um, is the body of a, a young boy about five years old, and um, he's not moving. You can't really tell if he's breathing or not. Neither of them seem conscious at all, uh, but he is holding onto, onto her, her dress. Okay. Um, hmm. So I only have a strength of 10. Is this, so is this beam laying on her, or is it near her? Uh, it's next to her, and there's a there's like a splotch of red blood on it as well. Ah, uh, I see. All right. Uh, well, so Talon looks like he's kind of on the outskirts of this. Would I be able to hand off the body of the the son to Talon? Uh, yeah, you could drag him as far as the house, as far as the edge of the house. Okay, uh, and then so, go back and try to help the woman. Yeah. Um, so Talon, you uh, up for that? No, he backed off. Uh, <laughs> um, Rurik, uh, true to form, I'm you, the smoke is is burning your your eyes, your lungs, and you're having trouble. You're trying to exert yourself, even if it is only to carry a small child um, in this uh, environment of, of heat and, and smoke. Um, I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. Now you're probably okay. proficient in Constitution saving throws. I think uh, I think clerics are. Okay. I... I'll double check. All right. Constitution. Okay. So wisdom. Oh no, sorry. Wisdom and charisma. Uh, so okay. basically, okay. your your Constitution saving throw is just going to be a d twenty plus whatever your con your con modifier fire is. Okay. So you get nineteen. Okay. Uh... Um. Did you roll twice? Oh, that's what happened. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Nineteen and seventeen are both good numbers. Okay. Um, so yeah, you you fight through this through this smoke, um, and you you go to pull the boy off what you presume is his mother, and the first sign of life that you have from him is his uh, his hand doesn't want to let go, and kind of takes a little more effort than you would have expected to pull his hand free from her from her dress um, and you you take him in your arms and you carry him to Talon who's absolutely amazed because you just again like 15 people just walked by this house and heard nothing and you just ran in screaming something about there's somebody in here and uh, coming out with a small child and you expect a halfling to carry a person yeah well luckily, <laughs> luckily he's five <laughs> So, uh, oh, okay, I can probably do that. Yeah, well, okay, um, I got him now. And then, even more inexplicably, you you would uh, presumably run back into the fire. Yeah, actually, um, you're absolutely right. Okay, uh, I mean, I shouldn't make decisions like that for you, which is kind of what you said your plan was. So now that you're out yeah. of the house, is that still your intention? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of my personality traits anyway. So yeah, I totally dash back in. All right. Uh, you go back in. You this time you don't have to crawl around. You know where she is, um, and you again you try to you, you you pick her up. She's much bigger this time, and you are a dwarf without an incredible strength behind you. Um, but nonetheless, you're able to to pull her body um, to pull her body to the door. Where I'm going to say whoever in your party now that you've delivered a small child from an inferno. Um, or at least a smoke-filled house. Uh, they're they're a little bit more inclined to to be there waiting for you. Um, and while he's doing that, I want to see if I can like rouse the kid or check make sure he's breathing and alive. Sure. Why don't you do a medicine check? Uh, yeah, if he's pulling the woman out, I'll I'll help. 
Okay, grab so her when he hands her off. Rourke, when you get to the door, um, suddenly these these large, you know, dragonborn hands reach down to uh, to help you, um, and he and Cole pulls the woman the rest of the way to safety. Um, as you kind of spend a few moments just coughing up epic amounts of smoke that's worked into your lungs. Um, uh, Talon, uh, on the other hand, uh, he, he gets the boy out of the smoke and um, looks him over, and with an 18, yeah, the boy, he's unconscious, but uh, it's he just inhaled a lot of smoke. Um, he is breathing, it's faint, but with some healing, or some time, and, and you know, probably the resources of... Uh, you imagine the keep is, or you hope the keep is going to have some resources available to you. Uh, okay. He should be okay. Okay. Yeah. And how's the woman doing? Uh, whoever's checking out the woman, I could use a medicine check there. Um, let's see. I could probably do that. Um. Eleven. Um, so you look, you look over this woman and, uh, the, the back of her skull is literally crushed in. Um, you, Ouch. you have to imagine when that timber fell, uh, you, cause you all saw the roof collapse from the edge of the, from the edge of town. Um, you have to imagine that this was, she was dead the instant that that collapsed. And she it appears she's been dead for quite a while. I mean, at least the, you know, 15 minutes that it's taken you to get to this part of town. Huh. I'm going to ask him how he knew someone was in there. Yeah, yeah. I totally thought I heard a uh, woman's voice saying, help my, help save my son. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I also have, well... No, that's a spell. I'm not going to waste a spell on that, so... Disregard. Okay. Screw the kid. <laughs> He's fine. I tell him. I tell people he'll, he'll make a recovery. Kid's good. Mother's not. Mother's dead? <laughs> she's... Gonna, well, um... Yeah, she's been dead for a while. Then who asked you to save him? Must have been the uh, disembodied spirit of the mother... Calling from beyond the grave. Okay, normal days. No big. That uh, makes no sense. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not that the only one creeped out. And while all of this is happening, I'm just reading one of my books, just, you know, trying <laughs> to know some things, learning some things. Hey, you, what do you know about ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, she was a mother carrying her newborn child, so there's a lot of strong energy with that. That's probably what called him. I think somebody else should check that body. A dead person does not call for their son. <clears throat> Alright, I'll go search the body. Okay. Uh, would it be investigation? Uh, yeah, no, there, there's nothing of particular interest on her. She looks to be a person of, of average means and nothing unusual given the town you're in, you know, very. She seems normal, guys. I mean, dead, but normal. I okay, didn't so I'm mean gonna lay her, her down. Pockets. I meant make sure she's dead. Well, I mean. Well, I was doing a generalized investigation. I wasn't like just, you know, searching for gold coins. That'd yeah, be any anything off about her? Yeah, like if there was a big holy symbol in her pocket or something. I actively would have left money if I found it. Who is your god, Rick? Oh, let's see. Do 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 do. You'd think I would know something like that, being a cleric and all, right? He's agnostic. <laughs> uh, uh, ill ill matter. <laughs> Ilmater, how do you pronounce that? Ilmater? Yes. Oh, healing god. Mm hmm. Or 
Perhaps he was the one to give you the information. Uh, perhaps. Maybe the mother uh, communicated and passed it along with through Ilmater. Ilmater. In any case, we saved a life. So I ask if one of the big guys can carry the comatose child, and we should probably get going. So I quickly lay her body down, and like if she has a sweater or something, I take it off and I lay it over her head and say a quick prayer. All right. You you treat her body with the respect you feel is owed. Uh, and uh, and with that, I do you move on? Yep. Yep. On my yeah. keep. Did someone pick up the kid? Yeah. Yeah. You have you have so many villagers with you at this point that. Oh, okay. Like somebody will, uh, somebody will take care of that. Do the villagers happen to recognize the family we just pulled out? Uh, yeah. They, I mean, they're they're not neighbors, but they're it's a small town. Um, I I don't have a name for her, but they give you her name, whatever it is. Um, they don't. If you ask her, if you ask any of them if there was anything unusual about the family, they, uh, you know, there's a short story uh, of. You know the her her husband dying in the uh, winter last year, um, and her son becoming the uh, the biggest part of her life. But there was never anything, you know, magical, or she was never particularly devout. Uh, you know, I'm trying to cover all the questions you might ask. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did she like jam? <laughs> <laughs> Only preserves. Uh Okay, so keep moving the same direction we were. Yeah, you. The keep is getting closer and closer uh, every time we flip maps. I want to oh. start peeking in like each window we pass. Mm-hmm. Um, you can absolutely do that, and and you will pick up a few more villagers uh, with you doing that, uh, going going that way. Um, a lot of the houses look looted. Um, if you were planning on trying to loot, no, it's primarily people looking for people. Okay. Uh, well, in, in doing so, uh, the party a little bit ahead of everyone else, um, the villagers are still back away, so you come across a somewhat disturbing scene. Um, there are a number of cultists uh, surrounding a, a, a man and what looks like it might be his daughter. Um, again, in color-coded official green rest clothing. Uh, a couple kobolds kind of watching from the sidelines. Um, and the cultists are doing some sort of chant. Uh, this time it's in Draconic. Um, those of you listening who can speak Draconic end up with kind of a, a sense of a similar thing to the chant before. Basically, like, all will burn when she returns. Um, That's not good. Fear her glory. General notions of, of, uh, of that. Okay. Well, uh, now there's a lot of cover provided by these houses uh, along the southern part of the this little class mini town square. Um, it would be pretty easy to sneak the civilians that are with you along there. Along there. Yeah. No, I'm going to save them. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to save them. Yes, I don't think we should let this ritual continue. If they're trying to summon what they, what I think they might be trying to summon, then that is definitely not a good sign. Uh, okay, so you, everyone's going to get a surprise round. So go ahead and roll initiative just so we have it. And then anyone alive at the end of this round, we will add them to the initiative order. Hey, it works. Uh, initiative roll worked this time. That helps me click. I just rolled regular. One second. Although, I don't know, rolling a six, working is kind of a relative term. Mm. At least I'm not alone in my second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to click my guy. Son of a monkey, and that was a nice roll. Did you have that set up as a macro, or are you typing this by hand? I'm typing it in. Oh, okay. Bet- uh, between this time and the next time we play, I'll make sure everyone's good with macros and so forth. Um, actually, macros are kind of... They're not as good as using the character sheet. I just didn't want to confuse people with the complex character sheet. 
it's not the first game. All right, that's special. I got the same thing. All right, perfect. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm here's how we're going to run this. You guys can act in whatever order you want. So if you want to set up something clever, you go ahead. I don't know how much clever things there are to do. Uh, but because, basically because you're going first, you can go first. I mean... Th- um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. It's all you. Uh, no, I was just going to say that since we have the opportunity to sort of set up since they haven't seen us yet, um, we can all get into some sort of range that we can attack with our range. That way we can just start to assail them quickly. Um, yeah, basically. Yeah, just get that sounds like a plan. Yeah, sounds good. Should we attack this round or wait till the full initiative round is over? Or surprise round is over? You got, the cultists look like the this ceremony is reaching a little bit of an apex, like they're singing louder and so forth. Um, you have a little bit of time to maneuver yourselves, but at a certain point, it's pretty clear they're gonna they're trying to sacrifice this family. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, we're attacking as soon as possible. I think. I'm moving okay. up and I'm shooting the first guy. Yep. I'm gonna move over here. Um, for when these moves, do we count our regular movement? In, in no. Go, I mean, just... as long as you're not moving into a place where we'd have to worry that they'll see you. Like I'm okay. assuming Alexius is around the corner of the house. There. Yeah. Like over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go there, and um, I guess Talon goes first with attacks. Let's see. Yeah, everybody move, and then we'll all attack. Where's Cole going? Is Cole moving? There you go. Yeah, sort of behind these. Okay, so let's start attacking. I rolled 11. Who Who were you aiming? Well, it doesn't matter. You missed everyone. Uh, unless you were wait, were you aiming at the man and his daughter? Because you'd hit them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oops. I mean, she's a red shirt. Yeah, that's one way to stop the ritual. <laughs> well, I was gonna say you missed everything, but that's not true. You you would have hit the kid, and the daughter, the uh, this. You yeah. successfully hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least I know I can hit something. Right. Uh, let's go, let's go through initiative order so nobody gets forgotten here. Uh, so that was Talon, uh, Alexius. Okay. Yeah. So I roll eleven for the cultist. Excellent. You miss. Uh, Nicole. Lovely. It's going great. Nine, that's going to miss. Work. Okay. And I am going to aim for the uh, the easternmost cultist. Okay. Is this with your crossbow? Yes. Okay, that misses. <laughs> wow. So Col- I'm glad we had the surprise round. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cole Chaxes. So, so the movement where we are now was sort of free movement. Yeah, there was so enough time I, in the ceremony for you to get in place. Could I run up to the cultist and whack at him now? Oh yeah, cut off his head. And they noticed that we're like shooting stuff at them this entire time, right? Oh yeah, uh, they oh, not rolled badly. 22 oh will hit. Uh, you do 6. And annoy a cultist. So does this interrupt their ritual, or is it still processing? Uh, this will interrupt their, their ritual. Okay, um, it's it's less of a ritual. It's more like a... Maybe... Like a sacrifice. Yeah, like they're yeah. doing something in honor of, of somebody. Whether this, okay. whether this specifically was meant to bring about any particular end effect, or if it was just part of their worship... Um, that's that you're not as clear on. Okay, good. But, cause, uh, but either way, it's probably not good for the family. I didn't want to take that chance of having them summon anything. Right. That's fair. Very few summoned things are beneficial to level one D&D players. Yeah, nobody summons Twinkies. <laughs> uh, right, plus one. Oh. Uh, that's not good. That's always what I love to hear. Uh, all right, so we're now in the real initiative. Talon, you're the one person who beat the cultist. Yay! Um, I say fuck it. I drop my short bow and I run up to the cultist. All right. And uh, I try and stab him in the neck with my short sword. All right. Nice. Hey. 
And you do with a 21. You'd actually get another d6 because of sneak attack, but it didn't matter because that was enough to kill him. Okay. Oh, I didn't know if Colchaxis counted for that. Yeah. So diagonal counts? Wait, is there something about Colchaxis that doesn't make him an ally? <laughs> I just didn't know if like it was diagonal or it had to be directly oh. adjacent. No, no, five feet. and it's, okay. Oh, I said, yeah, because the grids are ten. No, no, if you're in melee range, you're within five feet. And he okay. hit him with a great sword or a great axe, so that would be melee range. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got some cultists who are annoyed. Good work, Talon. Thank uh, you. I one, like killing things. One's going to run up and try to stab the person who just killed his friend. Oh, shit. I point uh, to Talon. But he, does, <laughs> but he rolls an eight, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Oh. Uh, this cultist is dead. Uh, this cultist is going to run up and try to hit Colchaxis with an eight. So that's going to miss. 5, 10, 15, 20. One more on Colchaxis. 10. That'll miss. And Alexius. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to move up a bit. And then I'm just going to attack uh, this cultist right there. All right. So roll. What is with these rolls? Yeah, it goes sailing past the cultist, kind of between the father and his daughter, and then sails off <laughs> into the, the distance. Oh, okay. Well, at least I cool them all down a bit. Yeah. Give cool. the daughter a haircut. 10, 15, 20. No, wait. 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. Dear Lord. 10, 20, 30. <laughs> Cobalt's charge. Uh, Nicole. All right, I am going to shoot this cultist. All right. You are going to miss that cultist. Work. Okay. Um, let's see. So. Is there any way we can see what hit points are on each of these NPCs? Or are they on full health? Oh, where is he going? Uh, I can't, yeah, I can't really tell you. One of them is, is going to hang back with the family, making sure they don't run away. Oh, that's nice. He's actually hiding behind the family. There we go. Oh, Tact terrific. Tactics. <laughs> <laughs> one, in, one in 100 kobolds knows how to use tactics. This is the... <laughs> um, no, you, you don't get to know how many hit points they have left. Uh, I can give you a vague description. Um, like, if one looks like, oh my god, he's about to fall over. I don't mind giving that out, but I'm not going okay. to I'm not gonna read off their hit points. Okay, sure. You don't want me telling them your hit points. <laughs> <laughs> or do we? Maybe they'd run away. That's true. Oh, he has eight? Yeah, I'll run away. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, so this is kind of weird. So, this guy here is like in a direct line with this guy here. So if I aim at um, the guy behind the family, is there a chance I'll accidentally hit the guy in front of him? Like I don't know how that works. Well, but he's on the line from where you are. From you to him. Well, yeah, so I would end up, like if I were to move here, for example. Oh, I see. Uh, n no, not you don't really... Yeah, no. Because, to be honest, because then I would also have to say there's a chance you'd hit the family. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, so if I were to move to here, uh, would I have a line of sight of hitting him, or would this crazy cobalt in front of me block that? Uh, he'd have a certain amount of... No, you can reach around the cobalt to fire. Depends on what you're okay. Depends on what you're doing. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to shoot my crossbow at the, uh, the cobalt behind the family. Okay. All right, so... And and miss. Oof! Good thing I missed the family. All right, well, that was fun. Uh, Colchaxis, please break the missing streak. <laughs> <laughs> of a uh, lefty and righty cultist here next to me, does any of them look worse off than the other? No. Okay. I'm the only so thing that's hit somebody. So I will go after the one on the left then. Okay. He 
You hit. Oh, no, you miss. Sorry. You're the only one who's doing the two rolls together. Sorry, uh, yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, when, we, when I show you guys how to use the character sheet, it's actually it actually formats the roll so it's easier to read. Um, yeah. So the 10 is going to miss, unfortunately. Uh, Talon. I'm going to run up to this guy and attack him. If you do that, you're going to take two opportunity attacks. Oh, that's true. I'm going to think about that then. Also, that was more than your movement. Oh, no, if you're a... Wood, no, it wasn't. Right. Yeah, this one. Um, but I don't really enjoy opportunities of attack. So I will oh, attack yeah. this guy. Twenty-two will absolutely hit. Yay! See, guys, this is what not missing looks like. <laughs> uh, All right. Now, if you'd attack the one diagonally north and west of where you were standing, you'd yeah, have I would have got sneak the... attack, but yeah. Cultist turn. The one in front of you is going to return the favor. Uh, maybe. Five. Misses horrendously. Yay! Uh, one on Colchaxis. That's going to be an 11. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, one more on Colchaxis. It's a 19. That is. For three. And Alexius. Okay. Um. So I'm going to make great attempts at hitting the cobalt. Okay. Great, great attempts. Uh, oh, what, what the hell? Eight. That's not going to hit, no. Okay, then I'm just going to move back. Okay. Cobalt phase. One is going to stab at Rourke with its dagger. With a nine. Uh, the one that, you, that Alexius just ran away from uh, is going to go instead towards Nicole since Alexius disappeared. And is going to stab at Nicole with its dagger with a 17 for four piercing damage. Ouchie. Yeah. Ow. Uh, the other one is going to take its sling and try to shoot Rurik. And get a 17 for three damage. Oh no. Oh wait. 17 doesn't hit Rurik. Oh good. So it has to overcome the armor class. Yes. Yes. Oh, awesome. Sorry. 17 hits almost everyone except you. Uh, Nikal, you got a kobold right up in front of you. All right. I'm going to drop my short bow and stab him in the face with a rapier. That's a good <laughs> idea. 13 will hit. Nice. Uh, that, will, that will kill a kobold, for sure. Uh, Rurik. Okay, so uh, clarification regarding spellcasting. Um, during an encounter earlier, I was told that we can only do two spellcasts. Is that like per campaign day, or is that per encounter? How does that... That's until you get a long rest, which is typically a day. Okay, so I only have one more spell I can cast today. Yeah. It yeah, is okay. tight on that, the spell casting. That is not happening. All right. Um, then I am going to continue to attempt to shoot this uh, kobold behind the family. I pull out my crossbow, take aim, and let's see what happens. Well, you miss. Oh, well, no. 13 hits. 13 hits. Oh, oh good. All right. Sorry, I'm hearing then... the noise and then the, the text update. So I hear the noise, I look, see the number. And then I... Okay. Yeah. And let's see, 1d8. Okay. Four damage. Uh, that cobalt is still up, although he's looking pretty woozy. Colchaxis. Okay, I'm going to try again on Lefty. All 
I hope that hits. 23, yes, that will hit. And that will completely murder a cultist. Uh, Talon. Uh, I'm going to continue attacking the guy I was attacking before. Okay, the one north and east. Yes. Uh, 10 is not going to hit. Oh, sorry. No, wait. No, wait, I rolled a d6. I'm sorry. Yeah. Still 10. <laughs> still 10. <laughs> it, so, still a miss. All right. It knows that I make mistakes. Cultus is going to return the favor with his scimitar. He rolls a 16. Uh, yeah. For right. three damage. Uh, the other cultist that's still up is going to hit Colchaxis with a crit. Uh, for nine damage. Hey, we get to use the uh, death checks for the first time. Hey. And it didn't well, kill you outright, so that's... Doesn't someone still have that um one point for the touch of a hand or whatever it is? Yeah, him. And he just went down. As I go down, I touch myself. Crazy. <laughs> 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 Alexius. That, so, wait, I'm hold again. on. Do I need to make an immediate check, or only on my turn do I make checks? On your turn. Thank you. So I'm going to move back up here, and I'm going to attack the cultist that's now in the fainted... Clutch access. All right. Not, not fainted. And it's an eleven. That's gonna miss. Okay, lovely. Basically, uh, I've just been throwing ice at everywhere else yeah. but these things. Cobalt is gonna try and stab Rurik. <clears throat> Twenty-one. That'll hit. Four piercing damage. The kobold standing behind the family is going to shoot its uh, sling at Alexius with a 23 for 6 damage. Oh, that's not good. Got two party members down. So who did it just take down? Uh, Alexius. Oh, me. Okay. 6 damage, which puts you at 0. 0. Yay! Uh, Nicole. Okay, um... You must kill something. <laughs> yeah. Would it be my standard action to pick back up my short bow, or can I use my move? Uh, you can pick it up. Okay, I'm gonna pick it up and shoot the cultist by, uh, Colchaxis. Okay. 14 hits. And yeah. I do get sneak attack, right? Yeah, because Talon is still within five feet. Nine will be enough to take out that cultist. Yay! Good job! Uh, for responding so heroically to the fallen comrade in front of you, uh, Nicole has just earned inspiration. Uh, inspiration is something you either have or you don't, so you can't earn it twice. You can spend it before you roll in order to gain advantage on that roll or to cancel out disadvantage. Uh, you can also give it to another player, as long as you do oh, it for cool. the roll. So, if, for example, a player was making death saves, that might be a helpful thing for them to have. But not necessarily. Everybody's fine right now. Uh, Rurik. All right, so I will continue attacking the uh, kobold behind the family over there. And you will continue missing. Oh, no, no, 17. Sorry, I did that thing again where I... I know, I know. I heard the noise. Right. 17 hits. He has one hit point. And it doesn't matter what you roll. He has oh, one hit well, point. <laughs> let's just see how badly I blitter him. Oh, there he is. Guts everywhere. He is finally dead. Colchax's death saving throw. This is going to be a flat 1d20. No modifier. 10 or up, it's a success. Oh, my wow, God. Wow, <laughs> two failures. <laughs> On a I had a feeling list. I should have used that. <laughs> So, yeah, three say, three fails, and Colchaxis is dead. I hear an orc fighter in the distance coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talon. All right, I'm going to keep going after that same guy. Yes, 24 will hit. I don't think that hits. Not at all. <laughs> He's got lots of armor under the robes. Yeah. And seven will be enough to kill him. Yay! So, there are no more cultists. Alexius. 
Okay. Death, um, death saving throw. Oh god, that is just... great. We're gonna roll. Set, if you guys roll saving throws in numerical order, you're gonna be dead before you get to the good numbers. Uh, Cobalt is going to try and stab uh, Rourke. And miss. I can't believe these rolls. Yeah. Cobalt is dead. Nicole. Um, Is there any way for me to maybe do a heal check, something, try to heal them? Yes. I have Uh, a healing potion on on me, by the way, in case anyone wants to use it. So the way I've always played is that healing potions, the party would always keep them where everyone else would know where they're kept. So you don't have to go, like, searching for it. Um, So if you want to run up and pour the healing potion down his throat, you can absolutely do that in one as your action for the turn. Well, since we've only done just one saving roll, do you guys want to wait for the second one and see how that oh, goes? And then... oh. So Kolchak has rolled a one on his first saving throw. Okay. When you roll a one, you get two fails. Oh, okay. He, yeah, I'm going to save him. He could die on his next yeah. save. Okay. Yeah, he should probably address that. So if we end combat by killing off this last kobold while there are people down, does that change anything about the way we're doing these saving throws? It depends on how mean I want to be. Uh, in theory... <laughs> <laughs> in, I've always kind of played that if you end combat, uh, there's enough time for you to all rush over and save whoever you need to save. Uh, that said, in this situation, because Colchaxis is coming up in two turns, and Rourke is probably going to have to keep dealing with the Cobalt in front of him, it really is the, the better move to save Colchaxis with the, the potion. Okay. Yeah, Unless I'm he wants a new character. Colchaxis. That's true. Yeah, if you were half Orc, you'd be up right now. You'd have one hit point, but you'd be out. Uh, okay, so if you're using the potion, um, Colchaxis, why don't you roll 2d4 plus 2? That is the standard healing for a potion of healing. So you have seven hit points and zero healing potions. And uh, now you owe your life to Nicole. Thank uh, you. Work. All right, so... I've got this cobalt to deal with. Um, however, I have a crossbow. I'm going to drop my crossbow and equip my warhammer. And I will take a swing at this cobalt. And miss. Uh, oh, no. crit, crit, crit. There we go. Oh, man. So we'll double the number of dice, but don't double the modifier. Okay, so we get... <laughs> oh, spectacular. <laughs> you have a very annoyed alright Colchaxis you are you are lying on the ground you can use half your movement to stand up I stand up alright uh, let's see I guess I will take a I just got probably one square of movement left yeah I'm going to remove the dead cultist just so it's easier to keep your tokens track of them. I step on the dead cultist body as I lift my giant body off the ground and slowly head over toward the kobold. All right. Technically, you can dash and get all the way to the kobold. Yeah, that's okay. I won't be a target right now. Okay. Do you want to go defensive? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, Talon. Um, yeah, I will run up Right there. Try and hit stuff. Twenty one will hit and there's no conceivable way you can't do two hit points. So Okay. Yeah, hey. Now with this point I will say we're out of combat and as long as you guys tell me how you're dealing with Alexius if you're giving him a potion or if you're you can also attempt to just stabilize him or which would keep, leave him unconscious but not, you know, dying. Yeah, to uh pay it forward I will go over to Alexius and give him the one hit point from my lay on hands. Okay. That works. Yeah. So Alexius Thank you. You have one hit point. And you, you climb to your feet. Uh, at this point the and the we're gonna say that the the rest of that horde of people that you've been helping. Um, I go check and make sure the two sacrificial lambs were okay. Yeah. They're good. They're going to join the they're going to join the group of um, 
color code. Yeah, we have a horde. Yeah. Um, and I guess we can search the cultists. Absolutely. Search for everything. Just search. They've got 40 gold pieces on them. Nice. On them each or total? Total. Okay. They're really rich cultists. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, you, you loot the bodies, you got 40 gold pieces. Um, one of them has a nice dagger, if uh, one of your r- rogues wants it. It's just a dagger, I mean, it's not it's not magical or anything like that. Not a magical dagger? It's, I got a dagger. It's just a nice dagger. Okay. Um, it's a nice filigree on it. I'll still take it. Uh, now, at this point, when you look at the road going to the east, uh, this leads directly to the keep. Um, the the way seems relatively clear. It looks like the cultists and the other the kobolds and the various raiders are attempting to surround it, but there are still some decent sized gaps in it. And uh, you, do you guys mind if I take a really quick bathroom break? Yeah, no, go for it. Okay, I'll be back. But if anyone else wants to, it's a good time. Um. So in the meantime. These macros, should we set them up for rolling our weapons and such too? Or So between sessions, what I suggest you do is check out, uh, if you go to the journal tab and you find your character and double click on it, uh, you can go to the character sheet tab. There's a very confusing uh, screen where you can enter your details, including your, your weapon attacks and so forth. Uh, I believe any button that has a little die on it, you can drag down to your macro bar so that you can use it without having to open your character sheet. Uh, the This will basically do all your calculations for you, and it also will produce a very formatted uh, output. Like, for example, if um, I see Alexius is entering his, his data, uh, see where it says across from strength? You see how it says save at the end of it? Yeah. So I'm actually not able to see this at Oh, like okay. I go to journal, I see characters, I click my name, and it's just my name and a blank. Um, it sh- that should be the bio. There's a tab right next to the bio that says um, stats or something. It's also line. possible I forgot to set it up for you to edit. Which which character are you? I am playing Rurik Iron Fist. All right. Let's see here. Uh... No, it says editable by James. Hmm... So Are I'm you... using Chrome right now. And it's usually pretty reliable in Chrome. Okay. Well, we'll figure that. So, yeah, so you don't see the bio and info tab at the top and then character sheet. So I've got campaign tools and then details discussion forum journal. I click on journal. Oh, no, that's something different. Oh, uh, that would help. Okay. So in the top right where it has the gear and then has the chat that we've been working in, oh, it's one that looks here. like a newspaper kind of thing. Oh, hey. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, so, Alexius, as long as you're in there... Oh, did you... Did you, did you yeah, see how, see how nicely formatted those are? The one thing to know, this was very confusing the first time we saw it, was um, the reason there's two rolls. It just, instead of it constantly, like if you have advantage, you having to click the button twice, it just always rolls two dice. And it's just if you have... If you don't have advantage or disadvantage, you use the first one. If you do, you consider the two numbers, and if you, you know, etc. So that's why it shows two. Uh, so again, that's something really handy that you can fill out between sessions if you if you'd like. Um, all right, I'm back. The formatted stuff is definitely nicer. I'll probably okay. do all that later. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't stop and do it now. Because there's like a, it's intensive to go through. It, it is, especially for spellcasters. Okay, so as we were saying, uh, to the east, there is a, a road leading to the keep. The keep is being surrounded. There are still gaps. It looks like the perimeter is not complete. And if one were to make a mad dash, uh, you'd have to fight your way through a little bit. But uh, you, you, even with the civilians in tow, basically forming a Mighty Ducks flying V, you could, with the uh, civilians towards the middle, uh, you're pretty sure you could make it. Yeah, we should do that and then split up on either side of them as they're running in and we can defend the trail of as anyone attacks. So go in as a point and then switch the point to the outside so they always stay defended. Yep. Okay. I'm down. Yeah. Sure. On paper it's an awful idea, but you know, 
piss loot your heroes and uh, and such. Just give me one second. I'm setting up the next page for you. I mean, the faster we can get to safety, the better, because my situation is very precarious with that lovely one HP. Yeah, you're not alone. I only got like three of them left. <laughs> yeah, you might want to stay with the, uh, the commoners. Yeah, I'll, I'll be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> it's not like you were hitting things anyways. God, I can't believe those rolls. That was a rock. Does Rook have any more healing? Um, I have... Rurik has one potion of healing. Oh, but no more spells. Okay. Uh, well, I've got one spell also. Um, that would be it for my spells for this day, however. And we may be fighting a big bad, so... Right, right. So I'm a little hesitant, although uh, Lexus is not going to be much help with one HP, so... Well, if we can get one hour rest, we can at least use our one hit die to get some some healing back. And um, I don't know if it's the same for you, Rorik, um, but um, you might be able to recover one of your expendables, so we'll see what the DM says. Uh, it's, it doesn't work for clerics. No, nope, never mind. That is a that is a wizard trick. Okay. Sounded good, though. I was very curious to hear more. <laughs> All right. So let me... I'm not going to put all the things on here, um, just so you guys understand what's going on. But uh, we have amassed a small army. You have. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. You don't really want to run this as a combat encounter. Oh, no. Uh, no, we what? don't. That's, well, that's damn terrifying. Eh, we can do it. So, <laughs> so around, like forming a, a circle around the keep are all sorts of uh, some baddies you've seen before, some you haven't, some that look like giant lizards, kind of like oversized crocodiles, but more like with the, the form of, of like an iguana or something, except, you know, the size of a small horse. Um, and they look very bitey. Very, <laughs> very, very bitey. Where are uh, we? Uh, you, you're coming in the road from the west. Okay. Um, uh, basically doing that maneuver that we, we discussed earlier. Um, and uh, as as you run up this road, the, you know, the cultists and the kobolds, uh, they start to converge on you um, as they attempt to encircle the keep. Um, and, you know, your swords out, crossbows, you're firing, you're fighting back, and they're closing in. And, and suddenly in this deep voice, uh, that almost like seems to to shake the ground under you, um, coming from on top of the the keep. Um, you hear fire, and a hail of arrows coming from the top of the parapet. Uh, land, they they three kobolds just fall straight to the ground. A couple cultists catch one in the knee. Um, you know, th th no more adventuring for them because they caught an arrow to the knee. <laughs> Good, somebody got the reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, right there uh, with you. It, it kind of it makes a small hole, um, or, or, or it widens the the hole that's enclosing uh, around you. Um, and just at this time, you guys are kind of the the those of you in the lead are just reaching the edge of the keep, and you you turn around as the the villagers begin to stream in. Um, you know, each of you taking another turn with whatever ranged weapon you have, or readying your swords and. Far another hail of thorns comes of uh, hail of arrows comes flying down, taking out a few more cultists, uh, a few more kobolds. One, a few land in one of those those lizards, but they seem completely unaffected, um, and they're they're rushing in. And uh, just as the last of the commoners makes it through the uh, through the sally port into the keep, um, the rest of you begin filtering in, uh, and the the gate. The doors to the, the Sally Port are slammed shut behind you by the, the guards manning the, the keep uh, just as the cultists all close in and the way out is blocked. And thus ends probably... Uh, well, that, that's the first part of it, if nothing else. Uh, you are now inside the, the keep. It is surrounded. You have rescued oh, some dozen plus plus villagers. Um, 
at this point, there are a couple people inside who appear to have some degree of healing knowledge. Um, some of them magical, some of them not. Uh, anyone who needs it, they can give you five hit points back. Uh, of course, it's hard for you to record that because your tokens aren't here. Let me, for those purposes, let me pull your tokens in. Although technically now you can do it through your character sheet, but... That dragon keeps flying over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not to scale exactly, um, but you are. It'll be a really tiny key. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so anyone who needs it can just add five hit points to there. I thank them. And they say you're welcome. They're very, <laughs> they're very polite. Oh, they're Canadian. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah the good news is the cultists they didn't immediately start smashing down the door. Um, they for for now the keeps walls and the keeps doors are keeping them out. Um, yeah. So uh, we knew, we said two or three hours. We're closing in on three hours. Uh, there is I still I have a little more prepared if you guys want to keep going, but I don't want to push anybody past how long they planned on being here. I mean, I'd blocked out for another hour or 20 minutes just in case we ran over. So, I mean, I'm free. Up to you guys, though. I'm free. Same here. Yep, I'm okay. I'm good, too. Okay. Uh, why don't you guys just give me one minute, uh, and I'll be right back, and then we'll continue. If anyone else needs it, we'll, we'll just make this like a five-minute break. So if anyone needs a few Sounds minutes, good. then uh, go ahead and do that. All right. All right, I'm back. Um, like I said, we'll give we'll wait a few more minutes. Uh, so, uh, especially the new players, how are you? How are you feeling so far? I think that's um, Mohandra and James. Yeah, um, it's pretty fun so far. Nothing crazy. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm a little lost with the mechanics. Um, I suspect that my enjoyment will increase um, as I get a better feel for my character. Yeah. How to do well, things. that's... the When you asked me what you, you know, the party needed, Cleric was definitely a race... Uh, sorry, a class that was needed. Um, but it can be a little... B- because you need to know how the spells work. It's... Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got some really cool spells, but I'm like, ah, oh, I can't use these. Well, and the fact that you can only get them... you know, At level one, you can only do two uh, it does kind of suck. Right. Now that goes up quickly, but they they do kind of throw a lot at you. 
though one of the descriptions for the this campaign that I found very apt was the only reasonable action for level one players to take when they see a a dragon flying over city is to nope 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 themselves out of the situation as quickly as possible. <laughs> To the point where the adventure actually says, uh, the rest of this chapter assumes the players decide to help. <laughs> there, there's certainly an option for sitting by while the village is burned and people scream and are sacrificed and horrible things befall them. Uh, but. So next be, time we know. I mean, <laughs> but then you wouldn't be adventurers. Well, yeah, when exactly. We're just real dicks. <laughs> And I mean, you've landed 75 gold. That's not horrible. And nobody died. And some cool robes. And yes, one yeah, set yeah. Of, of bloody robes. Which I'm sure you can find somebody to uh, wash them for you. Yes. So do we not um, get equipment or anything that we can sell or anything fun like that? It just kind of turns into gold? So, 5th edition has this really kind of weird mechanic. The Equipment you gather off bodies is almost always useless, unless it's magical or some other, you know, particularly good quality. Um, it's a little annoying because it's kind of like the equipment works perfectly while they're using it to attack you, but then as soon as you kill them, the equipment's useless. And that seems a little fishy, uh, but it is nonetheless... Yeah. Uh, I would say that accumulated as part of the loot is the value of whatever minor equipment you gather off bodies. Okay. I mean, I guess that's assuming because most of the time people just didn't take it to begin with in other editions. Yeah, it's, I... Unfortunately, I'm almost only familiar with 5th as far as playing. Um, I've heard a lot of I actually only got into this hobby not that long ago. Uh, it benefits me greatly because I don't have previous editions floating around in my head, messing up my awareness of how this edition works. But I don't always know. A lot of people can intuit why things are a certain way because they've played uh, previous editions as well. Yeah. So it works both ways. Yeah, I kept expecting the rules to be much more complicated than they actually are. Yeah, no, the, the two things that I think really helped simplify it were the proficiency system, because it just filters into everything, and the numbers don't go up as quick as they did in previous editions. Uh, and the other thing would be the advantage and disadvantage, so you don't have all those, well, I have a plus two because of this, and a plus one because of that, and then does this effect stack with that effect? Or I don't know. No, it's advantage, roll two take highest, disadvantage, take two, roll two, take lowest. And that stands in for a lot of the situational effects that might have bogged down uh, older editions. Yeah, I really like that aspect, because, I mean, then you'd have to keep track of minuses and pluses, and then it's like a math test every time you try to do something. Yeah. Well, and then they even, with advantage and disadvantage, as soon as you have one and, excuse me, and the other, it's just gone. So even if you yeah. have two advantages and one disadvantage, nope, you have nothing. And it just keeps it nice and simple. Okay. So, all right, um, we can we can start again. So uh, you have uh, made it to the keep again. You saved quite a lot of lives. Uh, we're all very thankful. Uh, people, the the few uh, healer type people, both medical and uh, magical. Um, have done what they could uh, for you. It looks like everybody's pretty much back up to full hit points. Um, and yeah, you're in the keep, surrounded by enemies. What would you like to do? No, we should figure out who is uh, calling the shots and kind of save this let's get in. It sounded like a, a kingly sort. Uh, yeah, so any any person that you... You ask who's in charge, they more or less point you to the the large uh, tower there uh, with the, the battlement on top. The place where Talon already is, um, but or at least on the map where he is. I'm doing King of the World at the top of the 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, several arrows fly in your direction, and you quickly stop doing that. <laughs> uh, no, you you join you join them at the same time the rest of the party does. Uh, you climb your your way up the you know cir- these kind of circular stairs that wind around the outside of the the inside of the tower, um, passing a number of interior levels along the way. A lot of scared villagers uh, huddled. You know. Do I notice anything interesting going on in those rooms as we pass them, other than just scared? It just seems like scared, some scared okay. people. Uh, the interesting stuff all seems to be happening up on the roof. Oh. Um, yeah. I don't uh, run away. Yeah. Well, every couple levels you ask, uh, if you guys know who's in charge here, and they keep... One of them tells you the governor. Um, and oh, they shit. All... Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this one-eyed man greets you at the roof. Uh, so you you climb your way up and eventually you find yourself on this like battlement on top of the on top of the keep tower. Um, there appear to be two men. There's a lot of guards around. There's probably like twenty guards. Um, a lot of them with bows, a couple crossbows, etc. Uh, there's also two men uh, that appear to be important. Uh, if you introduce yourselves, uh, well, okay. One is a human male, about sixty years old. Um, he is dressed in sort of noble clothing. And the other one is a dwarf. Uh, he has knotted and tangled bright red hair. Uh, he's in full plate armor. And uh, he's issuing orders to the guards, you know, watch the north wall. It's a similar voice to the one you heard yelled, yell fire uh, when you got that assistance when you were on the ground. Oh, um, I approach the dwarf and hail him. Uh, nice job out there. Ah, thanks. This is a, a quite a situation you found yourself in. What happened? Uh, at this point, the other man who's standing right next to him um, is gonna is gonna kind of interrupt, um, not rudely, just you know, joining the conversation. Frankly, we're not sure. I'd I'd love some prisoners to interrogate, but uh, at the moment we we haven't been able to to capture one. Um, All we know at the moment is they they seem to be raiding the town uh, and it's stealing valuables. Uh, we think that that's why for the moment they haven't attempted to take the keep. We haven't been able to find one alive, but we got a robe from one of them. Uh, dragon symbol, right? Yes. So yeah, we explained to them about the symbol of Tiamat, and that they were chanting in draconic and things like that. And the the dwarf is just kind of kind of like grunts, like, uh-huh. uh huh. Not rudely, you know, just. It's it's consistent with what he's heard. The other reports from some of the guards that came in before you, um, and uh, the the dwarf's gonna gonna continue by saying, you know, um, for the moment I'm more worried about what they're doing to the town, um, and he kind of nonchalantly points over his shoulder towards where the blue dragon is still flying in the background. Um, Although it's clear that he's referring to the entirety of the situation, is uh, uh, how many is there any kind of like uh, <clears throat> sewer system or underground tunnels out of this place that we could get people moving and escape? Um, and the the governor, the, sorry, the the dwarf is going to kind of look at the governor, and uh, and, then, and then turn back to you and nod. Um, he goes, "There was an old was an old tunnel. Uh, it was used to bring water in during sieges." Uh, it's been closed for years, but shouldn't take too much to reopen it. Um, and he pulls this kind of like large ring. It's like a foot around off of his uh, off his back, basically. And it's got about 50 keys hanging off of it. And he kind of looks through each one, one at a time. But amazingly, somehow he picks just the right one. He, he, um, he hands one of you, we'll say Rurik, uh, this kind of hefty iron, old, slightly rusted key. Um, it looks like it hasn't been used in a long time. Um, 
I asked him how many of the people of the town population have we sa- have been saved, like, I guess rough percentage-wise. Uh, he's not sure. He knows a lot of people fled. The people near the outside of the city just fled outwards. Um, so it'll be a long, you know, it'll be days before they know. There'll be a lot of people they never really know if they just ran off and kept going uh, versus ran off and then periodically tried to see if it was safe to come back. Um, there are, it, you know, it's, it's a town of like 1,500 people. There's a, at least five or 600 in the keep. Um, you know, you brought in, let's just say you brought in 20, uh, which is not an insignificant part of that. Uh, and especially because you came in towards like the end, like they just slammed the door shut. And, like they're, they kept them open as long as they could. So, but they know people are going to be hidden. Um, he he, te- he does tell you that there's a few other places in town people might have gone. Uh, they're supposed to go to the keep, but if they can't get to the keep, the the temple is, for example, a older building made of thick, heavy stone. And some people might have gone there um, either to pray for salvation or um, to seek protection behind its walls. Will the tunnel that's under the keep, does that go near the temple? takes you to the river. You can follow the river to the temple. If I look at my party get, numbers. If we, look do at, get, <laughs> if we do get the people out of uh, the keep, where should they go? Like, Is there another town they can head to for safety? Uh, they both feel like the keep is the safest place for them. Um, they Even are, with a dragon? I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, yeah, just put everybody in the keep, let the dragon fly over and melt everyone. So the dragon's actually made a few attacks on the keep, and there's there's some scorch marks on the outer walls in many places. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want to be on the courtyard, but it's actually a fairly sturdy place. From looking at the dragon, can we roughly guess how old it is? It is... An adult, which is for cl- for stats purposes, is more important than its actual age. I, I forget right, right. I forget the aging of dragons. Um, yeah, this is not right, like a, but that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. So. This is a full size adult dragon. It's an adult, but not ancient, which is okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I suggest we try to get see if there's anyone's left in the temple. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so the dwarf is actually going to point out, like, so you can't go out the way you came in, if that's right. not obvious. Through the um, tunnel. The tunnel, yeah, so this kind of leads you back to, you asked if there's a way. He said, whether we take people in or out, or whether you go and look for other places people might be, uh, I think those tunnels are the best way in or out. Um, I need my men to man the walls. Uh, can I... Can I ask you another favor uh, to just make sure the way is clear, that the, the lock is open, um, that the tunnel hasn't collapsed? You know, again, nobody's used it in many, many years. Yeah, we'll take care of the tunnels on our way to the temple, and then that way, if you need to get out, use them. Thank you. And he, he'll hand over the key which I think he already did, but whatever, he'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So that brings us... Uh, this might take a second to set up. Um, I do ask if they have any provisions that can that will help us clear the tunnels. Um, what are you looking for? Potions. Uh yeah, he calls over a couple of his guards and uh, asks them if they're holding on to, if they're holding out on him, if they're holding on to any uh, any potions. And two of them have a potion, so you guys now have two healing potions. I also inquire to see if anyone has a vorpal blade. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're fresh out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so. He he also has one of his guards uh, lead you down to uh, this room that's kind of like you, you go down to the ground floor of the tower and then it's down two more levels. Uh, 
the the keeps up on kind of a hill, so you're probably actually now level with the surrounding terrain. And he brings you to this small room, and it's being used for storage. There's crates against the wall, and they're not even fresh crates. That's God knows what's in them. Not, I'm sure nothing useful. Uh, and you take a few minutes, and you he, the guard just leaves at that point. So now you're not only clearing a tunnel, but you're on just dragon crates away from the wall. Uh, but either way, it just, just takes you a few minutes to, to clear um, the way, and you sure enough see a cellar door. Um, and if you put the key in and turn, of course, that this lock opens. Uh, he, he, you were told that there are two locks, one on the, obviously, the inside to keep people from coming in out, and one on the outside, etc. Uh, easy enough. Now, we get into some mechanic questions here. Uh, does anyone mind if I take one of the potions or, you know, hang on to it? No. no go ahead. Uh, as long as I can grab the other one. I don't know who that was, but sure. All right. It was Nickel. Oh, okay. Uh, so, let me... Let me can I tell you all where I put it in case <laughs> the same thing <laughs> happens again? <laughs> in my left pocket. Uh, okay, so we're using a new feature called dynamic lighting. Ooh. Yeah. So there is a tunnel ahead of you, and you can see just a bit of uh, moonlight shining to the f- through the grate of the door at the far end. Um, I need to know who has dark vision. I think we decided. Uh, Let's see. I think the uh, the dwarf should have it, right? The dwarf and the wood elf, I believe, are going to have it. Yeah, I got it. All right. Yeah, Colchaxis will light a torch. Oh, okay. Um, if you need, I have light as one of my cantrips. Let's go with that. How does that work? Um, I can just uh, uh let me see. Um, it uh, take an item like my arcane focus, and basically, it's light that um, has a twenty feet radius, and dim light for an additional twenty feet radius. So one of the neat tricks with light, because you can cast that on any object, is cast it on a coin or something that Colchaxis can wrap his hand around if he suddenly wants to be stealthy and dark. Okay. But, but that's big enough, you know. But then he can open his hand, and now he's got a twenty yeah. foot light. Um, okay, so let me let me set up some some things here. So, Nicole okay. is going to have. Do you know what the range in your dark vision is? Um, I can check. I want to say it's sixty feet. I might be moving you guys a little bit just while I'm. It's an hour. Yeah, dark vision is sixty feet. Um, light lasts an hour of clutch access. Thank you. Alright, so... 60. And... Nicole gets this. And then clutch access now is holding a... Beacon of light... That everyone can see. So if we move Colchaxis in. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. Oops. So um, normally I just I just make it so everyone can see, but we're gonna try uh, we're gonna try actually using the feature. So uh, it's a little tough because on the recording they can only see what I can see, and on a, awkwardly I can't see what you see. It's weird. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so everyone can see anything lit by Colchaxis's light, and anyone with dark vision can see the way they would normally see, or they should be able to. So, uh, the tunnel is very narrow. Um, it's, it's old, it's, uh, it's very, like, musty and damp. A lot of, like a little bit of moss growing on the walls and so forth. Uh, it's also, it's very narrow. You really can only walk single file. Um, the, the ceilings, 
a little short for somebody of Kolchaxis's stature. Uh, but you can squeeze through without too much difficulty. Let me ask you this. Um, should I pull out my dagger? Would, my great, would swinging around my greatsword be a little too much for this uh, tunnel? You, it would, might be a little difficult to maneuver. Okay, so I put it away and I take out my dagger, quote-unquote. All right. Now, uh, so because it's a single file, you should probably work out uh, how you're going to go down the tunnel. I mean, whoever has like the dark vision and the light should definitely be in front. So I've got the dark vision, but I also use a crossbow, which I presumably picked up earlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I currently have equipped. Do I have to explicitly say that? No. Yeah. Okay. If it's ambiguous, then you can always whatever the most All advantageous right. thing. Okay. So um, I do have, I think, the highest armor class, though. So I, I could just go charging forward with a uh, Warhammer. Uh, they both have the same damage for me. Do, do dwarves, uh, this is part of the I've played every edition since second uh, malady that you were talking about earlier. Do dwarves have uh, underground knowledge, like abilities to know how deep they are, or if there's problem with stone and things yeah, like that? Yeah, they, they have knowledge of stonework. So I am a hill dwarf as opposed to a mountain dwarf, though. Uh, I don't know how much that affects. I'm not sure. It depends on what you're asking, like what you're actually trying to work out from it. Well, I'm you... just wondering if the dwarf should go first in case there's, uh, you know, bad stone that's going to break and fall on us or break away from underneath us. Would he have any better chance detecting it than we would? Uh, he probably would. I suggest Rurik goes first, followed by Colchaxis with the light, and then everyone else turning around, fighting backwards. Okay. Oh, yeah, it says I've got stone cunning, so uh, always proficient with double proficiency bonus on history checks related to stone work and can't become lost. So. Uh, so yeah, so are you you're going first? Yeah. Sorry, I was just preparing another. And am, am I here then, or? No, Sorry. good. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to prepare something else and stay ahead, but. Uh, here we go. He's trying to kill us, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can move. Um, if you're moving cautiously, then why don't you move like ten feet at a time? If you're. All right. I mean, right now there's nothing that you're con particularly concerned about. Okay. Oh, and are so, these five foot squares now, or are they still ten? They're five foot squares. Okay. okay. Cool. So I can just move forward two squares. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you're moving cautiously. Yep. Okay. It's one of those funny things because there's no real reason you'd be worried about this situation, except that the DM put a map on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, yeah. You take a handful of steps down this dark hallway. Uh, Colchax as follows. <clears throat> Follows behind you with his glowing coin of awesomeness. Nicole's watching the rear. Oh no, we lost Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and indeed, you get a part of the way. And you, when you hit that about that point. You suddenly hear from the walls. You, there are some cracks in the walls. I mean, as to be expected, um, you suddenly hear a bunch of scurrying, and from uh, inside the walls come this flood of rats. Awesome. Reminds me of homes. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen rats until you've worked in a dirty tavern or in. Okay. So Good to know. clear the list. And if everyone wants to give the rats are gonna get a surprise round, but uh you know, they're rats, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Hey, look at that against rats. Oh, 
Oh yeah, the bane of my <laughs> existence, rats. <laughs> No oh, goody. Nah, uh, you got you got a twelve. You just oh, okay. I, can, I mean, I can manually put them in. It's just yeah. Um, okay, so the rat's basically going to go first. Uh, the one is going to bite work and get a hundred and twenty-two, or <laughs> or wow. I put the number in wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what you didn't know is these rats are actually gods. Ah, uh, it's just it's a hundred twenty, not instead of one d twenty. Okay, we'll try that again. Um, so my rats are going to bite Rurik. With 122. Okay, so wait, what what just happened? I just fixed that. Swarm of rats, character sheet. These are the most powerful oh, rats ever. Right, because there's two. Dangerous ass rats. Alright, third time's a charm. Roll a, roll a swarm of rats on Rurik. <laughs> 16, which will miss Rurik. And swarm of rats on Nicole. 14. That just will hits. Hit. Uh, so they bite you, and they do five. They, they gnaw at you for five. It's going to be tough because you guys can't see each other's... Uh, let, me, let me go in here and take this and just move it up. There you go. Okay, so at least now you can see each other's hit points, or lack thereof. Uh, all right, so back to initiative order, Alexius. Okay, um... So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to attack the rats in front of Nicole. Okay. So um, that's ten. Ten will hit the swarm of rats. Okay, and let's see how much I hurt them for. Um, wow, that's that's right, horrifying. You, you kill a rat. Oh, a <laughs> uh, rurik. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the rats behind us are dead now, yes? Yes. All right, so... No, no, no. What? Oh, you okay. killed a rat out of the swarm. It's a, a sw- rat. Oh, it's my God. swarm oh, of rats. One. Okay. You killed one. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I should have been more clear. All right. Um, so I'm going to actually then turn around at the swarm of rats by Nicole, pull out my crossbow... Okay. And shoot at them. Shooting your crossbow past all four party members in a tight place <laughs> is going to be very difficult. I'm going prone. <laughs> so okay, so I can't yell "get down" or anything I mean, like that. You're a dwarf, so you're only four foot tall to begin with. So even if they get down, they might still be in the way. All right. Well, I tried to save me, Nicole. Um, in that case, I'm going with Warhammer. The swarm of rats in front of me. All right. So, and... 13 will hit. Okay, and let's see how much... One... Okay. Oh. All right, there you go. Um, this... You, you strike this into this swarm of rats, but, uh, it looks like... At first, it looks like you're going to hit a bunch of them, and then a bunch of them scurry out of the way at the last second. Uh, you still crush a handful of them, but it's like not as many as you you anticipated as you were swinging. Oh. Call Chaxis. You okay, can't since eat. I'm a stabby, slicey guy, which I don't think works too well here, I'm going to do what I was going to do earlier, and... Uh, take an action to light a torch and then drop it in the middle of the swarm. Okay. Why don't you make a... I mean, lighting the torch is easy enough. Actually, to be honest, lighting the torch is probably your action for the turn. Oh, yeah, no. that's what I was thinking. Okay. So you now have a lit torch and a, and a glowing coin. Uh, Talon. Oh, um, I can't. I can't drop it on the, uh, the group. You know what? Go, go ahead and make. It's up to you. I just, you know. I... No, I know. Um, because like you're just dropping, and that should be something you can do. But it's like dropping with accuracy. Yeah. Well, 
just make a just make a strength attack without proficiency. So whatever your strength modifier is, or whatever your dexterity modifier is, dexterity? whichever's okay. highest, whichever's highest. Oh, okay. You're either throwing it at them, trying to hit them like that, or your dexterity throwing it at them. You know what I mean? It's either like you're throwing it as hard as you can to do damage that way, or you're throwing it in the right spot. Either one seems like an effective way to burn up some rats. Okay. And just, you know, maybe separate the group a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll use my strength since I'm better at that. But no proficiency because you've not trained in this. Uh, seven. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, he doesn't quite it. I should put a torch on the map now with it in its light. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, Swarm of Rats. Uh, the one next to Nicole is going to bite Nicole. Oh. You missed me. Uh, no, 17. And it, you skipped me. Yeah, it's gonna do. It's gonna do six damage. <laughs> uh, so Nicole is down. The swarm of rats up front is gonna bite at Rurik. Hey Dan, ten. I was supposed eight. to go before the rats, but you bypassed me. I'm sorry. You're nice. right, because I jumped back to Cole Jackson's turn, and then I hit the advance button by accident. Okay, so uh, go ahead and make your make your turn. All right. Well, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to check like the walls and see if like there are any other holes where rats could pour out of, like onto the st- us in the middle. Uh, there are holes all over the place. Wow. Is the walls like easily crumble? Like, are they falling apart? Uh, no, no. I mean, they're sturdy. Um, they've just been burrowed through in a few points. Okay. Um, then I'll just shoot the backpack with my short bow. Okay. I was actually going to try the, the torch thing, too. But, you know. 20 will hit. And don't forget your sneak attack. Right. Yeah, because he was up at the time. Nice. Please don't let me be dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, though. You shoot your bow, your arrow, and it actually cleaves its way... Not cleaves, but it finds its way into and through. It makes a little, like, rat shish kebab, where they're all, like, stacked up on the arrow. Um, Ooh, food. But a number of them dodged out of the way as well. Uh, okay, so then the swarm of rats already went. Um, they they downed Nicole, and they missed work. And now it's Nicole's turn to make a death saving throw. 1d20, no modifier. Don't let the rats eat to your face. Uh, 17 is a pass. Three passes and you're stable. Alexius. Okay. Um, so we still have these two swarms. Uh, okay. I think that... Hold on. Hmm, okay. Mm, okay, so, you know what, whatever. It's fine. Um, I'm going to cast Sleep. All right. Um, so that's one of my slots. And so creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Um, and I'll just put the center of where I am. And it should affect them both. So let's let's see what happens. Well, this is so I have to question. roll. Go ahead. I gotta look something up. Okay. Um, Say so yeah, I roll a five d eight, and the total is how many hit points? Yep. Of creatures this a spell can affect. So. Well, hang on on your roll for one sec. Waiting. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, 25. 25, all right. So, the, uh, yeah, 5, 10, 15, yep, they're both within your range. A, uh, a ball of mystical energy fills the tunnel momentarily. The swarm of rats uh, at the back is going to fall asleep. They all just kind of go take a nap. 
and at the front, uh, about about half of them fall asleep. Uh, the other half are still uh, a bit bitey. Of course they are. Uh, work. So, how long do they stay asleep? Um, so, starting with the creature that has the lowest current hit points, each creature affected by the spell falls unconscious. Until the spell ends, the sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to shape or slap the sleeper, sleeper awake. So if you hit them, they wake up. Yes. The spell also lasts one minute. Oh, yes. Um, which is ten rounds, which is forever in combat. But... So, okay. I had a question. Because they're asleep, do we get any sort of advantage or anything on that, in terms yeah. of attack-wise? Uh, yeah, you get advantage. All right. Cool. Is that against armor class or just um, how many hit points we hit? Uh, it means you roll the two dice and you take the highest number when you attack. Okay. Okay. Um, I, that's the name of my turn. So good luck, you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cole Texas. <clears throat> um, did you just skip my turn? I probably did. I do that a lot. Okay. No, I don't think so. No. Wait. Who are you? No, it's Alexis then Rorik with nineteen. Yeah. Yep, sorry, sorry. Okay, so Rook needs to do things. Um, Alright, so half of them are asleep in the front. I still get advantage, though, right? Or yeah. not so much? Yes. Okay. Alright, and that's advantage on hit or on damage? On, I know. Just on hit. Just on hit, okay. So I'm going to swing my Warhammer at them. Let's see. So, see if I can do this right. Press one. Press two. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Roll two d20 h1 plus two. K h1. K. Uh, there we go. There you go. 21. That will hit. All right, so now, uh, let's see how much it does. D8. Five damage. So you're, you're, what do you swing? Warhammer? Warhammer. Uh, yeah, so you, you smash your Warhammer into a chunk of these. If you were asleep, if you were still scarring around, um, and you, you definitely kill a few more of them. Um, at this point, the ones that are still left alive are going to scurry into the walls. Uh, they actually crawl over the ones that are sleeping when they do that, which wakes them up, but uh, those ones follow as well, and soon the swarm is crawled into the walls. Huzzah! <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I could move, but um, I don't think I really should, so that's it for my turn. Okay, so then it is called Jax's. Is at the wrong end of where the problem is. Yeah, I don't think I can get past several people to either heal Nicole or to no. squish the rats. So uh, I'm going to kick my torch to the side and just leave it here burning for the next hour in case uh, civilians need to come run down here. Otherwise, I'm uh, just ready in case something attacks. Okay. Uh, Talon. Um, <clears throat> the ones in the back are asleep, right? They yes. are. Mm-hmm. Um, he has to take a pot shot at him. And you will have advantage because they're not moving. So it's... Um, Okay. So that is a crit. Yay! So make sure you roll double the number of damage dice. All right. Uh, Same thing kind of happens over there. Uh, Shooting them wakes a bunch of them up. Um, But seeing that their numbers have dwindled significantly, they will also scurry into the walls.
I'm then going to go to the front of the pack. All right. Uh, then I guess Nicole has to make another death saving throw. All right, it's another pass. Alexius, what are you doing? Um, uh, I guess I'm moving a bit forward and then just get ready for any sort of attack. Let's work. So, um, if Nikal gets attacked while he's down, like, can that happen? Yeah. It causes, yeah. Uh, it causes failed saving throws. All right. Um, can I shuffle past people? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, because you're not in yeah. combat, people aren't trying yeah. to maneuver, so they'll switch to the side, and you can squeeze your way through. All right, so I'm not going to move carefully, so I'm going to move more than 10 feet. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And I'm going to hang here until he finishes uh, getting up. Okay. I think he's going to get up on his own. That's fine. Uh, Colchexis. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Talon? Um, I'm just going to stand there and dance. All right. Uh, Nicole, death saving throw. One save. No. Um, so, just so you guys understand how death saving throws work. Um... You can spend an action to do a medicine check. Anyone can do this. And as long as your medicine check is over 10, you stabilize him. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, well then. Hmm. Uh, Alexius. I will attempt this medicine check. Um, What am I rolling? Uh, your medicine skill. Which is intel. Which is probably, which actually should be decent for you because even if you're not trained, your intelligence is plus three. Okay. Um. Well, actually, my its medicine is for me is plus one. It's wisdom because it's wisdom. Oh, it's wisdom. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Well, you can't make it worse. Unlike real okay. medicine. Oh, it is. <laughs> my bad. Um. So do I roll a uh, d twenty plus one? Okay. Twenty plus one. Five. Yep. You don't know what's wrong with him. It's like <laughs> I. You really wish you'd stop bleeding everywhere. You think that might be part of the problem. Uh, like, this is magic. I don't know. Rurik. Okay, I will try one of these uh, medicine throws. You um, also have healing potions you were just given. I do, but I've got plus five to medicine. That's right. So. Uh, okay, again, I, just so I don't want anyone operating under unfair, like, because people are new, um, stabilizing somebody doesn't give them a hit point. They just aren't dying. They're still unconscious. Oh, so they're not moving around. Uh, right. They're also not fighting or helping or. <laughs> Please, tiny. We could drag him along. <laughs> we could. I do have a healing potion. Well, okay. I believe you have then... th three across the party. Yeah, yeah we just got two. Mm -hmm. We still have one. Sure. Yeah. All right. Then I give Nikal my healing potion. All right, Nikal. Uh, well, he pours it down your throat, so Nikal can roll two d four plus two, and try to roll a big number. Although it doesn't take a lot to get a. A rogue to full health. <laughs> That's all of it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Colchex is... I mean, you guys, you're out of initiative order, to be honest, at this point. So. Okay, who's going to be in the back now? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I should probably continue leading the pack. Unless you guys have objection. As the dwarf, so oh, I'm okay with that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Do do, and ten more. Talon is going backward. <laughs> I figured I'd take up the rear for you. <laughs> and in theory, somewhere here around the middle, there's also now a uh, burning torch. Uh, lighting up much of the hallway. Uh, so, uh, Rick, take a step back. You can't go through the wall. There's, oh. a, there's a door. He's also, phasing. Also, <laughs> but I've got a key. He, he can okay. blink. Uh, you do indeed have a key, and there is indeed a door with a lock. Uh, right. The lock looks old and rusted. For some reason, I don't think they match. 
Oh, we should try the key in the lock. Okay. Um, it's very stiff. Um, you can try to... You can do a dexterity check if you want to try to, like, finagle the lock open. You don't think uh, it's the wrong key. You just think uh, it hasn't been used in a long time. So, okay. my... I've got a uh, dex bonus of zero, so someone else should probably do that. I can try <laughs> and pick it. You can also try well, to use the key. All right, well, I'll go up front and try and use my dex and the key. Okay. So just a Sorry. straight dex check? Uh, you can use sleight of hand if you have it. Okay. I'll check my spellbook to see if I have the elusive spell WD-40. Yeah. <laughs> there is a spell called Grease. <laughs> There is a spell called Grease too, but it's not as good. <laughs> uh, so with a nine, you turn um, and you're you're wiggling it around, trying to get the mechanism inside to catch just right, and it does click open, um, just as the sne- the key uh, snaps. Um, so the lock is open. Uh, you have simply ruined the ability to use the lock in the future. I probably should have used my lock picking tools. Uh, the same thing might have happened. Yeah, but my plus is much higher. Ah, uh, oh, it's one of your um, expertise. 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 Yeah. yeah. Look, there's a lot in this town that's not going to be usable again, so I think we can you be okay you know with that. <laughs> okay. With with that in mind, you know what? You were effectively using the key as a lock picking tool, so I will I will give you that you got the that would make it an eleven. So you open the lock and it's not ruined. Okay. I wasn't Thank thinking you. of it in those terms, but that actually makes total sense. Like, if you can pick the lock with, you know, a rake and a comb, then you can do it with <laughs> with the key designed for the lock okay. uh, without a penalty. <laughs> so, uh, yes. So, you guys have are, are emerging um, down to the... Well, okay, so who's first out? So, Talon's first out? Um. Well, you open no. the door. I open oh, no. the door. To the degree so if there's something the there, it's going to hit me. Yeah. But um, I'm not going out first. <laughs> That's fair. I'll when, go out first if, if, if oh, yeah. people like. When Talon opens the door, um, he immediately hears the voices of people coming. Um, basically, this opens out onto the riverbank. Um, let me, I'm going to bring you guys back to the town map so I can give you an idea of where you've been. Uh, so yeah, so you more or less worked your way... Um, okay, I will say if you were to go back and compare maps to this map, it like I used parts of this map to build those maps, but I didn't. It's not an exact line. Um, like you can definitely notice that square up there to the north is where you went to before the keep. Don't worry about that. This is just flavor stuff. Um, but for what we're doing right now, the tunnel you just went through basically connects the edge of the keep to this river. Okay. It doesn't actually so, be, it doesn't even go quite that far. It actually kind of pops out right here at the bottom base of this hill. Okay. Um, the church, the temple you were talking about, is this building over here on the right. Okay. Just so people have like some context. And we hear voices, but we don't say anything. Uh, well, nobody. He. I was explicitly told that you were not poking your head out. That's true. I guess I meant, like, directly out front. Like, I can't just, like, see guys walking up towards the door. Uh, no. No. If you want to do... Why don't you do a perception roll? Okay. We'll see how well you see what you see. Three. You don't see, see what you see particularly well. <laughs> I see a door. <laughs> Well, I mean, you think it might be a door. You're not a door expert. <laughs> You're now your brother. He you was don't a have door proficiency expert. with doors. Yeah. <laughs> um, you see, you, you do make out um, there are some people, it looks like the, the bad people, uh, working their way up the river. Um, that looks like they're combing the river. And you quickly uh, duck your head back in. I say, I think I see bad people. Maybe. They could be villagers. Now, uh, you will get an opportunity here to... Basically, they have not noticed you. That's good. And 
you will get an opportunity to set up a... There's enough time. You can either hide in the tunnel while they pass, or you could um, set up an ambush. <clears throat> you know, whichever. So they are heading toward the temple or away from the temple? They're heading towards the temple. Well, I mean, you know, they're going along the river. And the river, right, but I mean, the, just generally speaking. In the direction of the temple, yeah. I say and, we kill them good. Well, we don't yeah, even know agreed. who they are. Okay, so we you get don't closer know if they're the cultists or the civilians. So uh, are they going to are I mean, they going to pass by us? They didn't see you exit. I mean, if you were if you quickly doused your torches, um, you know, hit any lights so it wasn't there wasn't like light streaming through the door, that would be helpful. Um, and if you do all that and you just remain quiet, they're unlikely to notice this. Like if they haven't found it yet, they're probably not going to find it right now. So yeah, let's do that. Instinct. I well, see. Let's do, yeah, let's do that, and then that way we can see who they are as they pass by, and if they're bad people, we can surprise them with an attack. Right, I was, I was being a little right. coy. They're, they're bad people. It's, oh. They were kobolds well, in the group and so forth. Sorry. Well, I was going to okay. say, why don't we set up an ambush, and if they're good guys, we don't do it, or we do it and go, hey, if they're bad guys, we yeah. rain down hell upon them. Yeah. If, the, if they're good people, it's just a surprise party. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, oh my god, why would you do that? <laughs> Don't you know what's going on? <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we can set up now. Really bad taste, but you know, hey. <laughs> All right. I really thought everybody liked balloons. <laughs> uh, if you give me a moment, I'm just setting up the next map. It's like, who doesn't like to be surprised by people wielding armors and right. trying to kill them? We brought Yeah, fish. you know, one of them's a dragonborn, so, you know, that's not scary. In that light, I put away the glowing coin, and I draw my big sword. Okay. Yeah, I guess, so I guess we can just start extinguishing any sort of light source we have. Yeah. Which is whatever that torch is, and the light from the coin. Well, the torch should be okay, because I don't think the light reaches the door we're going to, so we should be able to slip out and close the door, and it won't bother anyone, but definitely the coin. All right. So uh, with this particular map, um, I didn't. Okay. I forgot to prepare this uh, exact location. So we're going to do some live drawing, and it's going to look awful. <laughs> awesome. We're in a field. Yes, a big nondescript field. Okay. So look, if people want D and D the way it's supposed to be, this is it here. Yeah. <laughs> a, right. A blank mat and a drawn blue line. Everyone, <laughs> chat about other things while the DM draws some nonsense on the map. Discuss amongst yourself. Why is it blue? I'll give you a topic. The Mormon Tabernacle Choir is neither Mormon Tabernacle nor Choir. All right. So you guys Ooh, have. Those. Oops. Let me move this over here. So there's kind of like a a hill, and then. Let me see. Oh, there we go. And this is where. Oops. Wow, I'm having trouble drawing straightish lines. And not that this is as apparent as I'm making it, but that is where the the door is. Um, and then there's some empty space. And then uh, down here is where the river is. And it's pretty wide, but it's, it doesn't look necessarily deep. Um, And the people would be on this map to the west, and they're coming. They're coming close. There are, um, I guess, just for the sake of, there are some trees and such in this area. Oh, pretty trees! Yeah. <laughs> I can spend, they look like oak. I can spend hours <laughs> doing like. God, I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, you're going to put this on your channel, I'm not going to say what that one looks like, but it's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. So they're going up the, the river bank? Yeah. Yeah. And coming in from the west. Ah. Why does it keep switching back to blue? Because blue is a magical color. Could be. 
So how much time do you think we have to get into position? Uh, two minutes, which is a lot of time in D&D combat time. Yeah. So like, are they like roughly like... They're not like rushing up the river, I guess, is the, the takeaway from this. Um, put some trees on the other side of the river. They're surprisingly equally spaced. <laughs> it's an orchard. Okay. So there we go. Horrible rendering. It's fine. It's quick. Works. Um, yeah, there's plenty of trees you can hide behind. Uh, so what they seem to be doing is kind of lazily searching the river. Um, they're not in any particularly hurry. These are not the most motivated people, so they, I they, guess. So they're like on the riverbank. Yeah, they're on your side of the riverbank. Can anyone else not move their character? I just moved mine. Yeah, I can move mine. Uh, you I'm know good. what? You know what would probably. Help. Oh, I know what I did. I did something wrong. I got it now. Can I climb up into a tree? Sure. Right there. What I forgot to do was draw on the map layer itself, so that all these lines would be uh, unselectable and therefore not get in my way. But that's all right. Because I don't think they get in your way since you can't. Actually, I'm going to hang back over here. Okay. I think I'm good. Um, yeah. So are you guys, you guys are laying in wait. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. not afraid, but you know. Yeah. With everything ready. Um, I mean, with all the time you had to prepare, I'm even going to give you that that was... You don't even have to do a stealth roll, because you had tons of time to get things just right. Can I attack while trying to stay in stealth? Um, normally, attacking reveals your location. Okay. And they're, like, coming up this way, correct? Yes. Okay. But I want to be a sniper. There's a sharpshooter feat that you could take at level four that, or maybe it's Skulker, that doesn't reveal your identity, your location. Okay. When, uh, if you miss, if you hit, it does. So you just try to kill them in one shot. Okay. So, um, approaching from the west are guy in robes. A guy in robes. Cobalt. And let's let them get to like here before we yeah. attack. Let them pass Talon. Mm -hmm. Talon can shoot from behind. Yeah, I was going to wait because I'm so close to him. I didn't want to reveal that quickly. You can pick off the stragglers. And again, you said that they don't notice the um, the tunnel, right? No, it's not particularly... Like, if they were looking for it, they might. Or if they'd seen you specifically come out of it. Okay, but... Like, if Alexis shoots something from where he is, they're going to notice it. Okay. They okay. might They might notice it anyways. But they will notice it if Alexis fires from where okay. he specifically is. Now, if you kill them, then it won't matter, because they'll, they'll yeah. be dead. One, one question. How do we... Because I know how to do it in other editions, so... How do we keep someone alive? You just declare... With any melee attack, you can uh, declare that you are making it non-lethal. As long as it reduces their hit points to zero, then you can just say, no, it's not... I'm just knocking him out. Harder to do with a bow. So let's see if... if I'll, I'll do that to one of the cultists, and maybe we can run him back through the tunnel to... Uh, to the guys upstairs who wanted to question one of them. Yeah. Okay. So just one, or are we capturing more than one? Well, you maybe. know, if we can capture two cultists, we can play them off each other, but kobolds probably don't know much. Yeah, no, kill those. Yeah. They speak draconic anyways. Okay. Um, so what we'll do, they're, they're just going to lazily advance. You're gonna, you want them to get to roughly to almost on top of Rourke and... Uh... Nicole? Yeah, that area yeah, between like Roderick right and Talon. Okay. 
because they will they will simply do that without being um, let's see and they'll probably shift around <laughs> just just a little bit um, they are about to spot you but that is of course when you planned to launch your attack uh, you might as well let's just let's just go into initiative order um, you'll I'll let you guys act in whatever order you want to for this first turn but Jeez, Louise. But, oh, I have the stupid... That's why. Let's try this again. Ah, oh, there it is. A lovely eight. Ah, oh, son of a... Why? Oh, that's why. It's on the ruler. Yeah, that happened to me too. <laughs> Holy crap. That's a lot of fast kobolds. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you guys do get a surprise round. So, uh, Nicole, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to start off and shoot the... Can I shoot the kobold behind the cultist? That one? I would say maybe step out from the tree a bit. Like north two spaces fire or one space is fine fire and then you can duck back um he didn't know you know, he did not know you were there so you do get uh advantage on the roll and because you have advantage on the roll you get sneak attack cool thirteen will hit a cobalt Twelve will annihilate a cobalt. And then we let's see, let's remove him from the list. We skip all the cobalts because it's a surprise round. Uh Talon. Um, I'm gonna hit or try to this guy. Okay, same rules, you're hidden, so you get advantage and you uh All right, 17 will hit. <clears throat> and you get your sneak attack as well. Six will kill that kobold. Um, because everyone else was facing forward, because you killed him first, uh, you're still hidden. Okay. Uh, Alexius. So, uh, let me... Add two. So I'm going to go after this guy. And... Do I just roll a regular 1d6 or 1d20 or? Uh, yeah, you're doing Ray of Frost. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you get advantage. Everyone hidden. Um, I mean, well, you're getting the surprise round, but I'm, I'm, you guys hid. So I'm giving you advantage on these first rolls. Okay. So you can roll 2d20, kh1, and then add your spell attack, yeah. which I, we said was 5. Yeah. Uh, so 10... Ooh, that's close. Uh, 10 is not going to hit a cobalt. Skip okay. the cultist. Lovely. And Rurik. Okay, so I'm going to aim for the cobalt by the river. Um, with my crossbow. The one right on the edge of the water, or the one... Um, how do I ping again? Is it control click? Or? No, just just hold the mouse button down for a second. Just hold that guy. All right, that's what I thought. All right, so here we go. your crossbow, you fire and it goes into the water. <laughs> uh, oh no no sixteen! So God, I'm so sorry, guys. I was gonna say I thought sixteen. I do, I, it does. It does. It hits. It it yeah. I don't know okay. what. There's a delay in the. Maybe I'm hearing somebody else's bleep. No, there is a delay. Okay. Yeah. There isn't usually. That's what's okay. messing me up. All right, so... I've played so many games on Roll20, and... Uh, all right, three damage. You annoy a kobold. There's really only two things you can do a co to a kobold. You can annoy them, or you can kill them. They don't have that many hit points. 
Um, and we're back to the top of the initiative order. So, uh, Nicole. Uh, don't uh, forget actually, Nicole. Nicole checks. Nicole checks this. That's what I meant. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that. And there's no charge, right? If you go beyond your distance, you can't attack? Uh, no. There might be very specific abilities, but not as a general. No oh, general. Role. Okay, cool. So I'm going to run over here. On my way to the cultist, I will take care of this cobalt on my left. Okay. I don't get advantage, do I? Uh, yeah, you ran out from behind the tree. Go ahead. Everyone else got it. 17. That'll hit. Actually, both of those numbers would have hit, but... 17 is just so much better. Crap, the dragon's coming. <laughs> uh, that will just... That will cleave a cobalt right in two. Okay, cobalt turn. This cobalt's dead. Uh, five, ten, I think it's 15, my turn. Oh, unbelievable. Yes. Th that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm preemptively jump. I'm hitting next, and then we're dealing with something, and then I'm coming back. And doing I took it. another five-foot step toward the cultist. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to... Um, I'm going to shoot that one. Okay. Oh, I forgot the plus. Uh, plus five, twelve. Uh, twelve will hit. Seven didn't. You annoy a kobold. Yay. Okay. Now kobold's turn. Uh, one's going to run up here, and it's going to attack Kolchaxis. It's dagger, and it's going to crit you and do seven. One is going to 5, 10, 15, 20. One is going to run up and stab Alexius for 15. Yep, that's it. And that'll do 5. Awesome. <laughs> uh, He's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> next, next Cobalt is going to 5, 10, 15, 20 and stab Colchaxis. And 13. That will miss. miss. And the last... Where's the last one? Oh, he's dead. Okay. Trying not to get this wrong again. Talon? Uh, yes. Oh, God. Okay. Um, it's your turn. <laughs> I will... Kill... The cult... This cultist. Okay. So since the kobolds are stacked next to each other like that, do they get an advantage or anything? Or... Uh, kobolds get an advantage anytime there's an ally within five feet of the enemy they're attacking. It's the same rules that the rogues use for sneak attack bonus, but they get advantage on the roll. Uh, but it's not another kobold, it's an ally. So, Oh, so it doesn't matter whether we take out the cultist or the kobolds. Right. Okay. But it is um, always good to... He's in theory... Those two kobolds are in theory more dangerous than the one attacking Alexius, other than the fact that Alexius is um, wobbly. Oh, and I get... for... Alexius's turn, I'm going to give him inspiration for his attack. Okay, you're giving the inspiration you earned earlier to uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I still have advantage, right? Because they don't know I'm there? Uh, yeah, you're fine. One more round, then everybody's going to kind of notice that the people behind them are disappearing. Okay. Uh, 13 will hit a cultist. Okay. He is dead. Yay! So now we just need to keep the other one alive. Uh, Alexius, with inspiration, if you want to spend it. Um, yeah, because my rolls so far have been terrible. So that's um, just 2d20. 2d20, although, what, you, what spell are you casting against the kobold in front of you? Um, Ray Frost. I believe because it's a ranged attack, it's the same disadvantage because of... I forgot. I know you. Last time you attacked, he wasn't right next to you. Um, yeah. When you, okay, you well, start, actually, I I can actually move first because I didn't move yet. Except you'll if you move too far, you will trigger a okay 
Opportunity. Um, so you can use your inspiration, but it will cancel the disadvantage instead well, of. Can I use my quarter staff? Oh yeah, you can wallop him upside the head. Okay. With advantage because of your inspiration. Yeah. So that's plus five. Twenty-one. Nice. That will. Um, and then. One d six. Three. Plus, do you have a dex modifier? Who? Or I didn't know. do you have either strength or dex? I think that's a versatile weapon. I no, have dex, versatile. so that's um, plus two. We'll go with the plus two. I'll look up later if it's dex or strength, but okay. It might be some weapons are both or not both, but either. Yeah. So uh, for now, it's a cobalt. They fall. Okay. They fall with very little prompting. Uh, cultist is going to five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Run up to Nicole and slash you with its scimitar and seventeen. That hits for three damage. Okay. Keep that one alive. Rurik. All right. I'm going to take a shot at the kobold right here. Okay. Can I can I yell a suggestion? Sure. Yeah. Um, go after the cultists to keep them alive. I'm going to try something that I think I can use on the two kobolds. Um, all right. Okay. <laughs> so Kolchak just yells out, I got this, guys! <laughs> yeah, Kolchak's here. Crazy, he's, but okay. I mean, he's heavily And bleeding. I inhale deeply. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. So here's the problem, though. Um, I've got a crossbow equipped right now. If I run over there and... Well, I could shoot the cultist, but I don't know if I'll be able to keep him alive if I crit can or something. He, like shoot him so in I, the leg or something? <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Can I shoot him in the leg? Is yeah. that like a disadvantage roll or something? Uh, I will let you shoot him if you beat his AC by enough, and I will not tell you ahead of time what enough is. Then I will say you hit him in the leg. But there's a good shot. There's a good chance. Okay, if you basically you aim at the leg, and if you don't beat his AC by enough, uh, you cut an artery and he dies. All right. Instead, I am going to run over here and and hit him. So let's see. I'll do this, and I get advantage now because he's distracted, right? No. 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 Oh, I am not a rogue, so that doesn't work. Oh well. I'll figure this game out eventually. No, no. If there's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> All right. Um, so I drop my crossbow, pick up my warhammer, and which is surely covered in like rat blood, guts, and hair. <laughs> oh yeah. So he'll probably die from infection eventually. Yeah. But, but he, he can be questioned in the meantime. All right. So let's see how this goes. Uh, Seventeen will hit. Uh, as will twenty. Because okay. I did that thing again where I read the wrong number. Uh, All yeah, right. Twenty will hit. Also, that would have been enough. If you'd uh, <laughs> needed to beat the AC by enough, uh, so damage for your okay. Warhammer. So this is non-lethal damage. Yeah, from a warhammer. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lightly graze him with my warhammer. Yeah, you lightly cave in his skull. Yeah. Uh, two damage. All right, Colchaxis. With so if I take a oh, you know what. If I take a five foot step back, does that give them an opportunity attack on me? Which which direction back? Yes. That would give you one but not the other. Isn't your breath a blast? Depending on your yeah, sometimes you have a if you're going for the breath, what is what type are you? Yeah, it's a 15-foot cone. Oh, cone, you're fine. Cone, you can hit them both. Oh, okay, I can hit them both from here? Cone is, the the way it's described is at any point along the line, the dis- so it's 15-foot. So if you breathe like this, then at that farthest point, it would be like that wide. Um, so I drew it wrong, but if you figured if I rotated it 15, 20 degrees, it would capture them both. So uh, in short... You're fine to make that attack and hit both. Okay. So I don't think there's an attack. I just use it. You just use it, and you're going to... So roll... I believe they get a dex save. It is a con save versus 12. 
It's a concept. How interesting. What kind of breath is it? Cold. Okay. Usually those things are dex, but I'll go with con. So they're going to... And is it half on a save? Correct. Okay. So uh, this is a situation of save or die, because if they don't... If they save, they have one hit point. If they fail... Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Now they're both dead. No reason to roll deck save or no reason to roll con saves because even if they pass, um, four damage would be enough to kill them. That's what I was hoping. <laughs> uh, you were correct. So uh, yeah, they freeze and then fall and just kind of lie there as frozen kobolds. Um, Nicole. All right, I'm gonna drop my short bow and um, pull out my rapier and try to non-lethally not kill him. Yeah, slash him. <laughs> non- non-lethally <laughs> slash him. And I can move like that, correct? Uh, yeah, because you didn't move to do anything during your turn. So. And a critical. <laughs> nice. Uh, you'll, the number to beat here is seven. As long as you beat seven. I suppose if you did so much damage that it killed them outright. If you accidentally do 16 damage, he's kind of dead. Um, I roll 4d6 plus three because it's a crit and it's a sneak attack. <laughs> You might just forget his parents. Come on. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. You can. The book says you can declare you it's a non-lethal too hard. Hit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you found the sweet spot. Um, the cultist has been knocked out. Okay, so everyone's dead, right? Uh, or everyone, knocked out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You have one prisoner, and you got a whole bunch of dead bodies right outside your secret tunnel. Just. <laughs> Um, I say we throw all the dead bodies into the water. Well, we okay. loot them first. Right. Well, yes. Loot them, yes. Loot them Let dispose of. One, one mechanical thing here. Sure. I know that usually in D&D, when you kill an enemy, they're dead. Could I go over to the cultist and, like, stabilize him or anything? Or is that just not possible? So, for, yeah, for sake of... Um, he, he's stabilized. If you call him non-lethally hit, then he's fine. He's stable. No, he's, I meant oh, the other. You mean the dead one? Oh, I see. Uh, y- yes. You, I'll, I will let one person make an, a medicine check to try and do that. Okay, who has a high intelligence? Because it's not me. I think we decided it's wisdom. Yeah, uh, medicine is wisdom. So your cleric on my sheet. Seven oh, yeah, plus so five dead medicine. Have... We've got a plus five. Can anyone beat the plus five? I don't nope. think so. All right, then. T- plus All five right. wins. Use your medicine right. magic. Oh yeah, he's stable. You got two hostages. So, uh, yeah, the way it works uh, mechanically is they don't... You usually, just for the sake of speediness, uh, kill off any kind of creature that there's no reason the players would hold on to without doing death saves. Um, but for high, for like actual NPCs and things, you uh, at the DM's discretion, you do do saving throws. Now, in this case, you had a reason to save him, so and it hadn't been that many rounds since he died, so... I figured he was very close to dying, but... 14 does it. Cool, thanks. Uh, you search the bodies, you come across 30 more gold. Nice. And uh, we disarm these uh, cultists, right? Yeah, I would assume so. You also, at least some okay. of you, like the Explorer's Pack has rope. Um, awesome. Plus you're right outside the keep and you've got backup okay. in the keep. So... Uh, you roll the bodies into the river, and luckily, yeah. I guess, cobalts float. So they begin floating down the river very helpfully. Um, you return the captured cultist to the governor, uh, who is quite happy, and, uh, you know, that was that was quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we he, aim to please. Yeah. He'll, he'll take care of... Uh, He'll he'll take care of the interrogations and let you know um, what he finds. So um, let's go back to the like on our way to wait. the temple. So what are the chances we can like get a bit of healing from these people that healed us last time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see who's who's not doing well. You can't get as much as I you have, did last I time. I have one. All right, last I time I gave you guys point. five each. I'm going to give you. I'll give you ten to split however you want, like the part between the party. But some of you don't need it, so it shouldn't be yeah. too, too, too tough uh, of a decision. Cold Chaxus, what are you down to? I am at 5 from 12. Okay. 
And Alexis, you're at one. Um, one from eight. I mean, Alexis is a lot squishier than Kolchak. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'd say give him a little bit more, and then the rest to Kolchak. Or Nico, how low are you? Actually, you guys can split it because I have a, a healing potion I can take if I want to try to get back seven. Yeah, you, okay. do, you do still have two healing potions between the party. I mean, take advantage of the free healing, but right. um, the keeps resources are running thin. Remember, there are like guards and stuff that are up on the roof getting shot at. And How much are you down, Nicole? Uh, I'm down three. Okay, so if we give Alexia seven and you three, you guys are at max. That sounds good. Yep. I am totally and then I will that. do my potion... Okay, so, yeah, let's do that then. No, you got and seven. I'm at max that was, two. That was the exact number you were looking for. There we go. And hopefully if I need to roll again, roll now will actually let me roll good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you guys you guys work your way back to the keep. You hand over the, the prisoners. The governor's no longer on the roof. He's left that to... Um, the dwarf's name is uh, Escobar. In case He's Spanish? Escobar, Escobar the Red. Um, uh, so we've now hit eight, and I'm forced to ask the same question I asked uh, an hour ago. Are people looking to stop? I don't want anyone to feel pressured to keep going. Like, you know, we're, we're at not just the time we scheduled, but the hour it was suggested people plan. Um, if I think we can do one more section in about half an hour. Yeah, so I would have a hard stop uh, in about 40 minutes. So if we can finish by then, I'm good. I think so. I don't know. Uh, I'm good with either yep. way. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I'll keep your hard stop in mind. I'll even try not to come right up to the line on that. Um, awesome. Cool. So uh, as you're uh, you're in the keep, you're kind of in one of the lower sections of the tunnel. of Not the tunnel, the uh, the tower. And uh, you've handed over the thing to the governor. You went to find the, the where are those healers? Where did they go? Uh, uh, you get you get your healing. You drink your potions, and um, you hear a, a thunderous roar from outside the the castle, the the keep rather walls, um, and uh, you hear like a ringing of a bell. And uh, pat on the stairs, running past you, a couple archers are running to the roof. Um, there seems to be a lot of commotion. Up on the roof. Um, is anyone inclined to follow? I mean, not I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow up. Um, I'll go, can we see anything I... by just looking out a window? Uh, yeah, there's a big blue dragon. Oh, okay. um, it's very close. Um, it seems to be circling the keep. Um, uh, there's a... I... Th Sorry, there's a there's a very remember that deep thunderous uh, mm -hmm. stone shaking voice. Um, there's a call for archers to the roof. Well, I happen to have a crossbow, so uh, I, I suggest we up. start trying to get the survivors out through the tunnel instead of going up to the dragon. Because <laughs> well, this is a big dragon, it might level the keep eventually. Eventually, it has stood strong this uh, thus far. Now, I had a question. Um, so I have, like, this arcane text. Would I be able to use that in any way to gain any sort of knowledge about this dragon and where it sort of came from? Um, what, what's the ability actually say? Well, it's not an ability. It's just, oh, um, oh, oh. like, my bonds. It's that I have an ancient text that holds terrible secrets, and it sort of speaks to me and, and teaches me magic and things. Um, I don't think that would apply here. Okay. That that was a good, it was a good question, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we can keep going, and I don't think Nicole will miss much. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, and from, from through the window, you can hear the, the crack of lightning. Um, and uh, a couple screams seem to come from the roof above you. We still have to save the people from the temple, too. That's true. You guys got things building up. 
We do, but this this dragon. We gotta do something about this dragon. I mean, I doubt that we're actually strong enough to face a dragon. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna kill an adult dragon. I will point out there are lots of guards on the roof. It's not like you're there alone. Now that, that I mean, I don't let me, don't let me pressure you into something. Now, if I cast sleep, will I, will that actually cause the dragon to go to sleep? I mean, if you beat its hit points in your five d six, whatever mm. it is. So yeah. no. By the way, <laughs> the rule I was looking up earlier, the reason I stopped when you tried to cast sleep, um, it's a little awkward because sleep. So you add up. Well, you know the way the mechanic works. You you roll a number, and then from lowest to highest, you will, you apply them to creatures with lowest hit points, and then you subtract okay. them from the total. Uh, the trouble is, swarms of rats are, are mechanically one creature uh -huh. with a group hit point that basically reflects like the number of, of rats in the swarm. Um, so I, it was one of those things where if I applied the rule as written, you just put the party to sleep. Because... The creature swarm of rats had like twenty four hit points. Okay, but then I, I really that's not the intent of the rule. Mm -hmm. The intent of the rule is that creatures and rats individually have like one hit point. Yeah. So um, I just applied it as if you put the one on the left had like sixteen hit points, which is lower of the group. So I said, okay, all sixteen of them go to sleep, and then left <laughs> about half half the hit points for the other group. Okay. So that's that was that question spirit of the rule not rule as written <laughs> um, so yeah um, so as you're waiting here the walls do kind of shake at one point uh, you think the, the walls might have been struck by a uh, lightning blast from the dragon although they do seem to be holding steady at least for now so, you know some some dust shakes from all the crevices and and such we could always point the uh, villagers to get down through the sewers. Um, shouldn't take that much effort, and then we could tend to things up on the roof. Yeah, at least get some of them under cover. Some of them maybe hide in the tunnels for a bit while the dragon's attacking. Uh, yeah, let's at least get them all into that cellar area where the exit was. Okay, so they're prepared to run in either direction depending on what the needs are? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple, while they're not like guards and so forth, there's a few townspeople who are doing a decent job of corralling people and keeping people calm, and you're able to to grab one of them and explain the whole there's a secret passage that leads to the river thing, um, and which room it's off of, and uh, at your instruction they will get people down into, into that room if nothing else. You also warn them about the rats, so they uh, they're not going to be cavalier about yeah yeah so um they can absolutely do that um uh, and they're they're doing so i'm gonna so, go to the roof and check things out <laughs> yes let's you can always poke your head up and see what's going on yeah i'm gonna poke my head out of the entrance way take a look around trying to see what's happening hey what's up guys welcome back Uh, okay, so you, you, a couple of you go up to the roof. You're very cautious, very careful, very non let's jump into a dragon fight, which is probably good instincts. <laughs> um, uh, as, you, as you do, that, that deep thunderous voice of the. Oh, we lost somebody. I'm just going to give Ryan a minute to. Looks like it's reconnecting. Okay, it's not reconnecting, so we'll go on. He'll jump in when he gets back. Um, yeah, deep thunderous voice uh, up on the roof. Uh, another one of the commands to fire! And uh, a, a volley of, of arrows is let for uh, let loose towards the blue dragon that's keeping its, uh, it's keeping a good distance from the, uh, the tower um, itself. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to get too close. Um, it's you know staying at a distance and then swooping in for attacks, but then immediately going back out. That's the impression you get. Um, and uh, yeah, so the this this volley of, of arrows um, almost all just bounces off the the thick scale blue hide of the of the dragon. 
um, and it is it is turning to to come back this way. Um, and again, the deep voice arrows, uh, and all the all the guards begin dutifully drawing their from their quiver and readying their arrows. Uh, you have a, a brief moment in which to act um, while they're doing this. Um. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I still don't like the idea of fighting a dragon. <laughs> I have a feeling we need to go. Scared. Well, I mean, we could always dash down through the uh, the stairs and head to the sewers if things get out of hand, right? Yeah, but I have a feeling he's coming back with his breath weapon. Yeah. And, and, and lightning hurts. And he does have, he does go a pretty far range, so I don't think most of the spells that I can use can actually hit him. And if their arrows are bouncing off, yeah, I'm going downstairs yeah. to the civilians and I'm going to start moving them. So about that tunnel, I mean that temple. Yeah. Well, first I asked the dwarf guy or the governor, whichever is closest, if it's okay if we start evacuating people. I don't want to just steal his people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking all your people. Yeah, the the dwarf is up on the roof. He's he's in command of the the uh, the guards here. The governor's down a couple floors, um, and the the dwarf's going to look at you a little bit annoyed. If you're not here to use the bow, get off my parapet. Uh, and then fire, fire, and all of the guards release a good twenty something arrows. Uh, towards the dragon. This time, uh, two of them do seem to be very lucky shots and sneak in uh, between some of the scales of the dragon, um, who lets out a, a meager cry of pain. Um, and uh, who's up? Who's close to the roof? Anyone? Spe- anyone who speaks draconic? Um, I'm close. I, I'm by the entrance. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a dragon. He doesn't speak subtly. Um, <laughs> You you hear him say uh, something to the effect, uh, you know, your, your chronics may be a little rusty, uh, but it's more or less, they're not paying me enough for this shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh. Do you so nothing helps what he says? Yes, I tell everyone the dragon's not thrilled. He's too old for this shit? Yeah. It's like, gotta have time for this nonsense. So how far away is the dragon from us? The, the dragon's maintaining a decent arc around the, the uh, keep. He doesn't seem to want to get too close. I mean, he's within arrow range, but kind of at the distance where it's, you know, not at official disadvantage, just where it gets, you know, the aim gets a little dodgy. Um, okay, so about, what, that'd be like 35 feet? Uh, yeah, 35, 40 feet away, yeah. Does anybody have anything big enough that could hit him, maybe make him back off a little bit for a while? Like, I'm not looking to kill him, but something that's big and flashy in his face and makes him go, ouch, or yuck. Well, so I've got... any ballista or anything? Well, I've got a guiding bolt spell that's got a range of 120 feet. Um, And if we're about to call it for the day, I do have another spell available. Well, and remember, we're going to call it for the day, but it picks up minutes later when we start again, so you won't get your right, spells Right, there's back. no long rest in between. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah it's not a session. It's, you have to actually like go to bed for the night. If he was close to like 60 feet, I could cast Ray of Frost on his eyes, but... Well, he's about 35 feet away. And I can cast Ray of Frost on his eyes. Try to see if I can't blind him or annoy him a bit to back off. I think that sounds like a good, you know, let's see if he backs off and then we can run away. Do it. Freeze his eyeballs. Well, and um, my guiding bolt attack, um, let's see, it does 46 damage and then the next attack roll made has advantage. So, uh, unless we want to Hang on to these spells. We go either way. In case something bigger than a dragon comes along. Yeah. 
That's kind of where I was leaning. And I was like, I smaller, think this would be a good time. To, like, I don't think it's possible for us to ever kill a thing right now. I mean, unless he goes down. No, but we might be able to drive it off. Right. Right. So. And he's already ticked. He's like, they don't pay me enough for this. So I, I think we could probably, well, or we might make him really mad. We just need to keep on annoying him because, like, nope, they can't pay me enough. I'm out. Yeah. So at this point, you hear another booming voice. There's a lot of booming voices around this place, um, but it's different oh. than the first one. Um, this one appears to be coming from outside the walls. Um, it's a, a human voice, it sounds like. It's speaking common. Um, you, you're you guessing it's some sort of spellcaster because for it to be this loud, they must be augmenting their voice with uh, a spell like Thaumaturgy, which lets you make your voice louder. Um, and uh, the voice basically calls out... Um, uh, we'll make sure your adventurers regret helping this town. Can we tell who's saying already that? regret helping this town? <laughs> <laughs> already regret it. You can't make me regret any further. Can we tell a general direction for where this is coming from, or is it just like all encompassing booming voice? Uh, it's pretty encompassing, but it's coming from somewhere outside the walls, probably, you know, from the this side of the keep. So on the east or. Yeah, like South towards, towards the... Exactly. Okay. Would it be possible to use, like, an arcana check to see where that sort of... Where the magic that's enhancing the voice coming from? Uh, that would be more of, like, a detect magic thing. Whereas it okay. kind of tells you things about... I mean, basically, you could... If your arcana check would tell you that it sounds like it's augmented by thaumaturgy, but I gave you mm-hmm. that for free, so... Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, and I can't really use detect magic because I feel like he's pretty... Fr- it's further away than 30 feet. Well, you're more than thirty feet up in the air. Yeah. So. Yeah. I would go ahead and try to use that the big spell you had on him. Let's see if we because if we can annoy him out of here, then we can all just run out the tunnel. I think that's a great idea. Well, let's see how. So I will use um, ray of frost on his eyes. Well, hold on. Uh, let me do the oh, guiding bolt right. first because yeah. Like... If you they're preparing for another um, attack. The dragon's kind of swinging around to make another run on the keep. All the arrows are drawn. They're about to, like, it looks like the dwarf is about to call for another release of arrows. So if you want to join that group attack. Yeah, so um, we should totally do this. So so I should lead off with the guiding bolt. Um, So how do I go about doing this? I believe guiding bolt is a spell attack, which is going to be um, your proficiency modifier, so two, plus your... uh, Spell casting ability, so three, so 1d20 plus five. Okay. So. Off we go. Uh, 15 is not going to hit a dragon. Uh, everyone can make an attack. There, the, you know, there's also a command to uh, fire. 19? 19 will hit a dragon. Yes. Now, because it's, we're not like in battle, and it's more like I'm not using the spell to distract him, just to cover his eyes. Does that change how we sort of what we roll next? Um, well, if we get through this round, we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, let me. Sorry, I didn't realize Ryan was not able to rejoin the call. And he still may not be. Um, okay, so, sorry, I'm losing track of characters here. So the 15, Rorik missed with his Guiding Bolt, but then Alexius used his... Um, Ray of Frost Ray with of 19. Frost. 19 will hit, so uh, go ahead and give me a damage roll. Five. Right. Give me one sec. I mean, that didn't kill a dragon. Don't get too excited. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would be extremely shocked if it did. The dragon was like, <laughs> it tingles. I'm just hoping that it's like, well, it doesn't hurt, but it's, annoying. it's on my eye. Right. I can't really see that well, so um, issues. Okay, any of your non-spellcasters, if you want to make anyone with a bow or a um, crossbow, can make an attack. I'm saving um, arrows. Colchaxis is checking all the defenses, the door, um, making sure that things are piled up in the right places and stuff, you know, being a, a paladin of helm which is the god of protection and defense. I'm kind of 
using any knowledge okay. I have to make sure that like the guards are, are standing in the, the right outside. place. And okay, you're up on the roof. I mean, if you joined everyone, but... no, I, I I left the roof when the okay. dragon was turning around. Okay, gotcha. So right. I'm so, checking the rest of the keep. So you cannot make an attack. Anyone else Correct. who went up on the roof can. Did anyone else go up on the roof, or just the spellcasters? I did not. All right. Um, the dragon is going to uh, swoop in. It's going to open its maw, and a lightning bolt is going to strike out at you. Um, I will need the two players who are up on the roof, which are your spellcasters, to make uh, dexterity saving throws. Uh, what is my dex? Eleven and seven. Um, the eleven, you dodge out of this lightning just in time. Um, Alexius, you seem uh, frozen in a bit of fear by this thing flying straight at you. Um, and just as this lightning looks like it's about to exit the mouth and, and crack across the, the roof, um, a one of the guards uh, knocks you, basically knocks you over. Um, kind of, you know, flies into you, pulls you out of the way and uh, lands with a hard thud on his shoulder. Um, uh, the lightning misses you completely. Uh, when he gets up, he seems to be nursing his shoulder a lot. It looks like he might have broken or dislocated his arm um, in doing so, but nonetheless... Well, well, that's what you get when I'm trying to look at a pretty dragon. Yeah. Now, two other guards, uh, they weren't so lucky. They were uh, just fried. Um, and their bodies lay smoking on the parapet floor um, and the in the deep booming voice the, the dwarf is going to yell for arrows and uh, the guards that are remaining hesitate for a moment but they pull arrows and begin readying their bows well I'm out of spells I can shoot arrows but they're just bouncing off Uh, I mean, I I can cast one more spell, but I I don't have a very good defense against a dragon if it attacks. So I don't really want to take that chance. I call from like the bottom of the stairs. Let's get these people out of here. And I'm like, okay, let's do <laughs> this. Okay, you guys uh, abandoning the roof? Yep, yeah. I I am. Okay. Um, you you head downstairs. Um, I guess you're overseeing the evacuation then? Yeah. Okay. Um, you begin hustling, uh, you know, villagers through the through the tunnel, um, you know, kind of like a... How close is the next major or any kind of village? Uh, quite a long ways. Um, I can bring you back to the overview map here. Just over the next hill. Yeah. <laughs> so you're down here. You might have to zoom in. It's a low resolution copy. Um, you're in Green Nest. Okay. Um, that's probably on foot. A two week journey to Burdusk or uh, whatever, well, the, whatever that other city I can can't see is that I can't make yeah. the name of. Uh, it might be. It might be anywhere between like. Uh, it's probably about 10 days. Let's say 10 days. On okay. foot. Without provisions. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just for context. I make sure that every person down in the cellar carries at least a couple days per rations with them. Okay. By uh, so rating yeah. whatever that cellar area was. Sure. Yeah, the, there's supplies in the keep. You can uh, empty it out. You give everybody like a little parcel of food and, or water uh, to, to take and share. Um, you hustle them down to the river, and uh, I think for the yeah, moment. Yeah, I was going to say I'm going to move to the front of the try to move to the front of the line to make sure that there's no one, no more cultists on the on that side of the tunnel. Sure. Um, probably a few more. Um, you know, while you're doing this, you are seeing on the roof more. Um, you know, the the dragon swoops through, and 
it actually sweeps right over the, the keep tower and uh, a few you see a few of the, the guards get picked up in its large talons and kind of drawn off the roof and then dropped to the floor of the keep um, which is a good uh, bludgeoning damage distance and uh, yeah so you, you get quite a few people out there crossing the river they're, they're running um, into the, the fields uh, you know they presumably know the area even better than you they'll know where to go or and so forth or you you hope they do um, you get uh, just about everyone out uh, some of them don't want to leave and there's you know they, if this is their town they're not they, they're fe- they feel safer in the keep um, you know there's a few dozen that want to stay but the majority of them are going um, aside from guards and so forth and uh, just as you're watching all of that happen um, <clears throat> as you're watching the last of them cross the river uh, you hear a huge slam behind you um, and there is a blue dragon which has collided with the keep tower um, it has a large arrow sticking out of its eye it looks like one of the guards got insanely lucky and uh, struck the dragon right in the eye. Um, the dragon crashes into the keep, and a good number of the guards fall. Again, the, the very <clears throat> bludgeony damage uh, type distance to the, the keep ground. Um, many of them, however, seem to be evacuating from lower levels. Uh, you know, you can... They're coming down the stairs and so forth. So quite a few guards survived. Uh, the, the dwarf, Escobar, uh, seems to have survived... Um, a lot of the guards are dead, and the dragon, uh, after crashing into the keep, um, kind of seems to be done with whatever the heck he came here to do. Uh, he ends up flying up into the the smoke that's hanging over the city, and uh, and away from from Greenrest. Yay! <laughs> and I think that's where we'll end things for tonight, without any more extensions.